Hi. I forgot to turn on the lights behind me. At least I caught it now. Hello? Are you dead? I think they Oh no, they're there there they are. Okay. <laughs> ah. So Yeah, hello. <laughs> Today we are starting the cosmic turnabout and it's gonna be a lot. Well, is it though? I don't remember actually a lot. I feel like I remember crying, but who knows? I cry over everything, so. <clears throat> okay. Let's just get right into it, because why not? You know, might as well. Continue. Hell yeah. A courtroom bombing incident. A terrible attack launched by the will of a madman. An incident perfectly symbolized the state of the legal world in this dark age of the law. Mr. Wright brought it to a resolution of sorts. It wasn't really a cutscene, I don't know why I did I don't know why I did that, but whatever. The tonate was discovered to be the one responsible for the bombing. If only it were that simple. Somehow, I can't help but think. Good for you. <laughs> There's a darker influence at work. One that's lurking in the shadows, waiting. That's why I want to review the trial that was taking place when the bombing occurred. After all, I've got more than a few personal stakes in it. Oh, here, video. All the speed tags, it's fine. Is it now? You sound pretty drunk. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> it doesn't go any higher than 40% speed. I guess I could like increase the speed or whatever, but I'm not, I don't dare doing that right now.
Yeah, it was just a cutscene. I don't know why. It was just a... A big cutscene, I guess? Time for another trial to begin. But this one is different. Um, sorry to bother you, but... Are you alright, Apollo? Ugh. Was I making a scary face just now? Oh, hi, Juniper. Yes, I'm fine. I was just doing my course of steel exercises. I'm all ready to go. Yes. Knowing you, I'm sure you will be just fine. Oh, I brought you a present from my garden. Is this a lotus root? I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was a sponge. <laughs> That's right. My grandma says lotus root is good for your eyes. I, guess, I thought it was a... What's it called? Like a, a loofah? Is that it? She even says that if you look through the holes, it can help you see into the future. It's for good luck. Maybe later you can cook it and... Thanks for this. I'm gonna have some right now. Oh my! Mm. Kind of tough though. <laughs> you can't eat it raw, but thank you for the enthusiastic try. Oh god. Whoops, she didn't think me weird before. She will now. Gotta calm down. You know, I don't think she cares that you're weird. I don't know, just just maybe like a hunch I have. Apollo! I'm sorry I'm late. Hi, Tina. Junie! I didn't know you were coming today. Did you come to cheer Apollo on? Well, I get it. You sly little thing, you. <laughs> Athena, stop. We're kidding around, Athena. The trial's about to start any second. Is everything all set? Oh, Apollo, Apollo. When will you ever figure it out? Figure out what? Who the fuck is moaning in the lobby? Oh, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. Was that a sigh? Okay, sure. Let's go with that. Oh, this is it. It's all over for me. They're gonna find me guilty. This is our client, one Mr. Solomon Saul Starbuck. He's a very famous astronaut who happens to be an acquaintance of mine. I wouldn't know it right now, but he's usually a very upbeat and driven person. The scene of the crime this time happened to be the Cosmos Space Center. Back in high school, my best friend and I went there almost a little too much. But that's where we met Mr. Starbuck. He'd ask about space travel and he'd launch into story after story with so much passion. Like in those days, Man was 100% my hero. Are you sure you're okay with being my lawyer, Apollo? Of course I'm sure. I know you, Mr. Starbuck. I know you're not the type to commit murder. Thanks, but... Oh. I was supposed to be in space right now. Of course. I mean, I can't really blame you for, like, being upset that you're not in space. <laughs> Aww. Oh my god. He's so depressed. It almost seems like an act. The launch getting called off must have been a huge shock. I'll probably never get the chance to go into space again. Don't say that! Don't stop believing! Besides, you just have to go in... You just have to go into space again. Yeah, I don't think I could face Clay in the afterlife if I just rotted away in the cell. Clay Terran. I can't believe he was murdered. I mean, he was such a promising astronaut under your command. Yeah, he was a good guy. Always there to pick me up when I was down. No one loved life as much as him, that's for sure. 
It was always so full of energy. Telling me you're fine, Mr. Starbuck. Aww. How could something like this happen to a guy like him, huh? I've seen Mr. Starbuck so down. Aww. Clay's gone. I'm going to prison. I wish I could burn up like a shooting star right now. Mr. Starbuck! He'll be fine! Ugh! What is it? What's with the yelling? I'll get to the bottom of this today. You'll see. And in exchange, I want you to go back into space for you and Clay. Promise? Does that mean you have lots of evidence to prove my innocence? I apparently have one piece of evidence. That's it. Oh my god, I forgot to turn on this light. I was wondering why I looked so strange. <laughs> I was like, huh? Why do I look so blue? <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> ah. So, damn it. It's fine. I haven't really did, done anything. I just looked at the evidence. I have one piece of evidence and my batch. But yeah, Clay is. was. A close friend of Apollo's. Mm. Oh, um, well, how about that? We didn't get to investigate the area as much as I'd have liked, thanks to the police. I'm done for. I'm a goner. Somebody catch my breath. <laughs> I'm a goner. <laughs> Everybody thinks I did it. Well, I was gonna soar like a comet. Thought I was gonna soar like a comet, but I'm just gonna crash like a meteorite. No, don't say that, Mr. Starbuck. Don't count yourself out yet. I know it's hard to lose a teammate, but you gotta keep going. And what about you, Apollo? What about me? I was just thinking, wasn't Clay your best friend? We need to focus on the trial right now. Are you all ready to go? Apollo! The trial is about to begin. If the defense would please proceed into the courtroom. Okay, here we go. This is it. This is one trial I can't afford to lose. For Clay's sake and our clients, I will find Clay's killer. Court is now in session for the trial of Solomon Starbuck. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Hold on. Let me just save here real quick. I was wondering what, what it would like do to the... I'm just gonna... Choose the default costume for Apollo again. Oh, okay. Never mind, I guess. Interesting. I was just kind of curious anyway, so it's fine. Oh, it's so great that I can just, like, have it. I can just return to a title whenever I want. I love that. Couldn't do that in the previous games. Well, I guess you could on, like, the trilogy on, like, the Switch or whatever, but, like, now on the DS. The amount of time I literally turned off my DS just because I make a mistake. This is ready, Your Honor. Excuse me, Mr. Justice. Yes, Your Honor. What happened to your eye? I'm fine. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Are you sure? I don't... 
I'm fine, Your Honor. The defense is ready. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's been like this since yesterday. He keeps insisting it's just a sty. Hmm, I suppose it's something he doesn't want to discuss. Maybe he's entering a touchy age. Very well. And the prosecution? The prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Interesting. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, we start right off. I see. <laughs> Hold on, where are the demons? Hold up! What the fuck just happened? How was it able to run smoothly through that? That scared me. That scared me more than the actual demons. <laughs> the prosecution is now ready. Well, it didn't take him long this time. What's up with Black Quill? Now then, I, I, I shall give the opening statement. Silence. Simon wants to do it himself now suddenly? What's going on? I'll do it. Y you will? What an unexpected surprise! This time, I can't leave it to anyone else. I, I see. Ah, something is off with the two of you today. You both seem different somehow. Very well, Prosecutor Blackwell. Your opening statement, if you would. It was just yesterday. The crimes in question occurred at the Cosmos Space Center. Ah, that famous federal research facility of all things related to astrology, right? Astronomy. It's astronomy. Anyway, a rocket was set to launch from there. But at 9.28 a.m., before they could even move the rocket to the launch site, The explosive devices were detonated, and the launch was cancelled. My word! Two bombs? How dreadful! The defendant in today's trial is charged with both, both the bombing and with murder. One Mrs. Solomon Starbuck. For whatever inane reason, he detonated a bomb on the rocket he himself would be in. Solomon Starbuck? You recognize that name. Isn't he that famous astronaut? Correct your baldness. Mr. Starbuck was the pilot of the Hat-1 rocket seven years ago. As you may recall, despite some interstellar trouble, his mission was a success. Some say it was a miracle he returned alive. I suppose you could say he's a living legend. Ah, oh, I remember now. He's become something of an international celebrity, right? We even turned that incident into a movie and everything. Interesting. Yo, yo. I was so shocked earlier. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I literally just washed it and just let it air dry. Um, so yeah. In the beginning of this episode, the cutscene went in like 10 frames per second. And it was slowed down to like 39% speed. So the demons were in the cutscene today. And then we did like the pan over the the gallery and it worked and it worked fine and i'm like hello what's going on that scared me more than the actual demons <laughs> we've got a real space pioneer in court today 
Hmm. Even heroes tumble from their lofty heights. Returning to the subject at hand. Ah, yes. The victim was one Mr. Clay Terran, a subordinate of the defendant. To be fair, it was a pretty, like, uh, intricate cutscene. A lot was going on. Indeed, a loyal disciple brutally stabbed to death by his mentor. Stabbed to death, you say? You mean his death wasn't a result of the bombing? Correct. Despite his lofty dreams, the victim was seen as an interloper by the defendant. And so, he was sent not into space, but to the universe, which we mortals cannot see. Hey. That's his best friend, by the way. His best friend is fucking dead. Nice pirate cosplay. He doesn't want to talk about it. I think I've heard enough. This The case seems pretty clear-cut at this point. Well, wait, I can go back and, and look at it. You know, so, um... Oh. I can't go further back than this. Anyways, in this, uh, Simon... Wasn't ready, and he wanted to do the uh, opening statement. Hmm. However, there is one thing I'm curious about. That metal box next to the witness stand. What purpose does it serve exactly? Uh, to carry Candace arms dead body i mean right now that's what it does <laughs> so this is this is like the case that was going on in like the beginning of the game since you asked so nicely it's your coffin <laughs> see on me he also broke his chains immediately it was like, I'm not ready. And it was like, Bonk. And I'm like, okay, just... Simon is in an edgy mood. When is he not? I jest. It's evidence. Due to its immense size, we have little choice but to lay it where it rests now. Wait. Simon can joke around? Okay. We shall get to the contents of the box in due time. Huh. I feel like I just lost 50 years off of my life. Does he even have 50 years left? Inner monologue, Athena. Inner monologue. Enough jabbering. Bobby Fulbright is the name. Injustice we trust. Ah, Detective Fulbright. Very well then. Please explain the details of this incident to the court if you would. First. Now, on it, first, take a look at this pamphlet from the Cosmo Space Center. In it, you'll find a diagram outlining the overall layout of the Space Center. Ah, here we are. For a more detailed look at what's on the left side of this building. Take a look at this cross-section that we, that we, the police, have created. The launch pad and the main building. Oh, I love space too. <laughs> the launch pad is the square building, and the rounded structure is the main building, right? You got it. The incident took place in launch pad one, and in the main building's lounge. I'll be using this diagram during my testimony. It'll make it easier to understand. Before the rocket was set to launch, two bombs went off. Boom! Boom! One on the second floor of the Space Center's main building, and one in launch pad one. Thankfully, only the two astronauts were in launch pad one at the time. The two of them managed to make it back as far as the boarding lounge. 
But after the escape, one of the two was found stabbed to death. Hmm, a murder on top of a bombing. Detective. The victim was already dead by the time you arrived at the lounge, correct? This is like the same. This is what they were... This is the, the trial that was ongoing when the bombs went off in the courthouse. Yep, thinking he'd sabotaged the bombing. The defendant attacked and killed the victim. Let's look at this tragic photo. Oh my, is that a knife in the victim's chest? Yes, Your Honor. It's a knife that cruelly ended this young man's dreams. We couldn't get any prints off of it, though, because the defendant was in his spacesuit. By the way, Detective Fulbright, why are the victim's helmet and right glove absent in this photograph? We had to remove them to identify him, Your Honor. Yes. We met her before the trial. I, per I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity, after all. Hmm, yes. It would be very difficult to identify him without a face or fingerprints. Now, there's just one more thing I'd like to inquire about. What is this round thing next to the victim in this photo? Something so important to the victim, he took it with him as he escaped to the... Uh, as he escaped the launch pad. A capsule that apparently contains asteroid samples. While obviously valuable for research purposes, it has no relation to this case. Hmm, I see. So, we know that the bomb in the main building was on the second floor. Where was the bomb that was in launch pad number one? Why did I say number? Pad one located. Heh, <laughs> that one was on the rocket itself. It was situated around the central part of the rocket. Apparently, the area around the launch pad's elevator was a sea of flames. I would like to submit this diagram and report into the record. The trial's just started and we're already in a bind. You can get used to it. Besides, that's what cross-examination is for, right? What the two astronauts were doing during the bombing. That'll be the key. Before the rocket, okay, I, I get up. Yeah. How powerful were the explosions? Well, the one in the main building wasn't strong enough to bring the place down. Yeah, pretty understandable. But the room it went off in was burned black, thankfully. Nobody was hurt, due in large part, of course, to me stepping up to lead the evacuation. Hey, what were you doing there in the first place, Detective Fulbright? Ha ha ha, I'm Bobby Fulbright, Hero of Justice. I'll be there wherever and whenever people need my help. So you just happen to be at the Space Center? Okay, sure. I go to the other side of the world, or even the edge of the universe. I'm not sure he knows how far that actually is. I guess I'll leave that one alone. Admirable decision, Justice Stono. Huh? What did he decide? Anyway, would you describe what it was like at the Space Center at the time? The bomb cut the power to the central bank of elevators and the third floor lounge. It was pitch black in there, I tell you. However, the security cameras and whatnot were running on emergency backup. And how did the evacuation go? I immediately and heroically whisked people down to the Space Center's basement shelter. The basement shelter? Yes, and there was an emergency shelter beneath the Space Center. An emergency shel- <laughs> An emergency shelter, huh? Oh, here it is! It's at the bottom of the diagram. The Space Center's pretty impressive to have its own shelter. Hmm, power outage and evacuation seem unrelated to the murder at this point. Guess I'll leave that aside for now. So there were two explosions in total, correct? 
Yep, that's right. Hold it. Let me get this straight. Mr. Starbuck rigged a rocket he was going to board with explosives. Huh? What are you talking about? If the defendant really did plant the bomb on his own rocket, he'd get caught in the explosion as well. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Of course you hadn't. You're the judge. You never think of anything. Hmm. Fine. A simpleton for a simpleton. Fulbright. The motive. Understood. The defendant actually had astrophobia. Astrophobia? What's that? A fear of space, naturally. Just the thought of space can cause the afflicted to freeze up. And so, in his terror, the defendant found a way to stop the launch at the last minute. That's absurd! Unfortunately for you, we have evidence. Take a look at these. What are they? These anti-anxiety tablets were found among the, de the defendant's- f the defendant's possessions. Stop with the puns. Apparently, he was taking them in secret to quell his fears. There were a multitude of problems with the rocket Mr. Starbuck rode seven years ago. Hello, guys. Rumor has it, it threatened to crash a number of times as well. That was, of course, very traumatic for Mr. Starbuck. Objection! That doesn't mean he'd go so far as to blow up his own ship. Silence. The defendant couldn't bear to mar his good name, now could he? No, not after the media had branded him Sol Starbuck, space pioneer extraordinaire. Given these conditions, the defendant could hardly run away like some base mutt. What? So that's why you think he resorted to the bombing? Naturally, he constructed this act of sabotage in an attempt to blow up the space center. Which would effectively abort the launch, but spare his reputation. It's not claustrophobia, it's astrophobia! <laughs> I thought you made a pun. <laughs> Hold on, where is it? Uh, astrophobia. <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, God. <sighs> I'm sure you understand why we have to bring justice down on his at atrocious criminal. On this atrocious criminal, I was really confused. Hold it. Are you sure it was only the two of them? It was just before the spaceship was sent to set to launch, so of course it was only those two. Mm -hmm. well, there could have been somebody else inside that rocket. Silence. I just noticed Taka when he slaps his hand. <laughs> Notion of a third party in Launchpad 1 is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge, one must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with the clearance to do so. A fingerprint recognition device? It sounds as futuristic and complex as a space center. Actually, it's not as amazing as you think, Your Honor. Take a look at this photo. This is the door in the lounge with the fingerprint lock. Only personnel whose fingerprints are registered can pass through. Hmm, I see. That is very different from what I had in mind. And is there a record of the number of people that passed through the door yesterday? Yes, there were only three. The defendant, the victim, and... The director of the space center. 
Yuri Cosmos. Doesn't that mean it's possible that the director is the one who did it? Not a chance. He was in the main building when the bombs exploded at 928. I'm pretty sure you can... How does that create an alibi? <laughs> Doing his job directing the launch. Besides having an alibi, he has no motive for committing these senseless acts. He has a point. I guess the director can't be considered a suspect then. Yeah, remote triggers. I was thinking about the same thing. Also that, and also you can... Literally put bombs on a timer. Hold it. So while it would appear that the pair barely escaped with their lives, in actuality, one of them had already been murdered inside the rockets. That's the angle the prosecution wants to push, correct? You got it. In fact, that's what I've been trying to say this whole time. If the victim had been alive, he would have for sure tried to stop the bombing. Is there any chance Mr. Terran could have been killed before he boarded the rocket? They were both alive and well at boarding time and embarked under their own power. Their hearts full of hopes and dreams of space. And then both of their hopes and dreams were dashed. If I may continue my explanation, after the evacuation order was given, the defendant made his escape, carrying the victim to make it look like a rescue. Hold it. And who was the first to find the victim? Actually, there were two of them. The Space Center director, Yuri Cosmos, and Detective Candice Arm. Oh, look! There she is! <laughs> One of them was a detective. Yep, Detective Arm specializes in bombings, you see. She and the director were ordering the evacuation following the explosions. They were also worried about the astronauts, so they hurried over to the boarding lounge. It's when they discovered the victim, along with the defendant. Now look at that, a familiar name. Two witnesses, huh? One of them is a detective. I wonder if we will see more of her. Boom! <laughs> I doubt even the one would have anything to say that would help me. I think that pretty much covers the details of the case. Only the victim and the defendant were on the launch pad when the for former was killed. If this is the truth, then only Mr. Starbuck could have carried out this crime. What little I could get out of him only hurt my case. Hmm. Just this tunnel. Foolish as the warrior who rushes headlong into battle. Preparation is an essential Preparation is an essential element of battle. So I advise you to take a gander at this. What is it? My mixtape. Please listen to it. <laughs> Footage from the security camera. As the two astronauts emerge from the bowels of the launch pad no pad one corridor. The boarding lounge security camera captured their des desperate escape. Now, I would direct your attention to what the defendant is shouldering. What you can see is none other than the lifeless body of the victim. What? The demons! We exercise the demons! Hell yeah! Order! Order, I say! This... This lines up exactly with what the prosecution has been asserting. I should have known Blackwell would have something like this ready. Um, Apollo? How exactly did they determine that Clay was already gone in that footage? We have cleansed this holy place. <laughs> ah, I see what you mean. Whether Clay was still alive at that point is pretty crucial. Your Honor, please take another look at the footage. Isn't it possible that Mr. Terran was still alive here and that Mr. Starbuck was helping him? Why, I believe you're right. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. Silence. Hm, 
Perhaps that's what it looks like to a one-eyed hothead of a dotard. But it only makes sense if it's the victim's dead body. What do you mean? Fulbright, explain it to Justice Tono. You got it. Ready, kid? If the murder had occurred in the lounge, someone could have spotted it. Anyone can enter the lounge after all. But doing it while they were alone in the spaceship, that's a horse of a different color. What do you mean by old bag syndrome? Objection! You can't deny that there's a possibility the murder could have happened in the lounge. All that video shows is a man helping his fellow astron astronaut out. Silence. Your assertion is based on emotion. It's based on your belief that Mr. Starbuck would surely help his own disciple. But you have no logical explanation as to why the victim could still be alive. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, Mr. Justice, the prosecution is right. Your argument is lacking in sound logic. But it sounded perfectly logical to me. Well, Mr. Justice, if you have no further objections, then I believe it's time to bring this cross-examination to a close. Objections? Well, I... Uh... Hold it! Your Honor, the defense requests a little time to think and regroup. Ah, given the facts, I'm not sure I see the need. What is it, Athena? It's just... there's something that's been bothering me. Hmm. If it isn't the defense stalling for time, as always. Ah, uh, oh, that one, yeah. Very well. I'm feeling generous. You may have a small measure of time. You have five seconds. Five seconds? After that, I declare this cross-examination to be closed and a verdict to be rendered. Your baldness, raise your gavel high. It's time for a countdown. Ow! Ow! Ready? We don't have, we don't have time. Spit it out, Athena. Only three more seconds. Uh -huh. Look. I don't think the prosecution's explanation is very complete. Meaning? Meaning there's something missing. Like, they conveniently left it unexplained. Something they didn't explain. Something they didn't explain. That's the longest three seconds I've ever experienced in my life. Ha! Huh, you're right! I think I know what you're talking about. Your five seconds are up, Mr. Justice. Is there anything about the prosecution's argument that you'd like to rebut? Re 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 rebut? Rebut? Yes, Your Honor. Actually, there is. There is something the prosecution has yet to make clear to this court. Hmm, well, if you put it that way. What is it that the prosecution has failed to explain? Why the body was moved. I have failed to explain why Mr. Starbuck would bother bringing the body back at all. If the defendant wanted to kill the victim, why didn't he just leave his body in the rocket? Why go through the trouble of bringing him all the way back to the boarding lounge? Ah, that's true. I didn't think... I don't think we've heard the prosecution's thoughts on that yet. That's because they have none, Your Honor. After all, how does one explain something so illogical? Prosecution is claiming that the defendant moved the victim's dead, dead body. What if the entire premise of that argument is wrong? Then let's hear your theory, Mr. Justice. The defense proposes that the defendant didn't kill the victim. He was helping him. Ah! Fulbright. Explain it for our sad friend here before I nod off to his monotone monologue. Inform him exactly why Space Boy moved the victim. Huh? You gotta be joking. It's simple. Mr. Starbuck did what he did to s direct suspicion away from himself. He wanted to create the impression he heroically risked his life to save his partner. That's why he made sure to make it to the security cameras. 
so there'd be a record. At the very least, he appears to have achieved success with you and the old man. Ah! Uh -huh. One man carrying the other to safety. What a beautiful expression of friendship. The average person. A person wearing a spacesuit weighs easily over 200 pounds. Saving the life of a partner who weighs as much while trying to escape deadly flames. What a dramatic sob story fit for the silver screen. Indeed, I was completely taken in by the humanity of the story. You see, if the true ending is that all traces of this hammy act were meant to be blown up. Yes, and now we, we arrive at the thrilling conclusion. The third explosion. There were three? Sir? <laughs> What are you talking about? There was no third explosion! Silence. Indeed, you are correct. Then why- Okay, you know what? Fuck yeah. But that is thanks to Detective R. It was she who identified and secured the bomb. However, it doesn't change the fact that the third bomb was discovered in the- Discovered in the lounge. The steel coffin beside the witness stand. That would be a bomb transport case. We used that to transport the deactivated bomb here. We we all know what's inside of there right now, right? It was found in the lounge. A bomb in the form of, the, of a most distasteful toy. What? One on the second floor of the main building, one on the launch pad, and one in the lounge. The defendant planned to set off three firework displays. Fortunately, the third was discovered before it could be detonated, for had it not, the victim's body and other vital evidence would surely have been immolated. Objection! Ah! Before you utter a word, know that the evidence supports me. Ah. It's like he's reading my mind. As it is still undergoing forensic investigation, I do not have the evidence on hand. However, Know that a peculiar item was found in one of Mr. Starbuck's pockets. Specifically, a bomb detonation switch. Found what? Why is this more unsettling than the actual demons? <laughs> I suspect the defendant had no time to destroy such damning evidence. When the Space Center director and Detective Arm stumbled across the murder, so he thought to hide it in his pocket. Feeble brain that he is. Uh, I miss them too. No! Mr. Starbuck would never do anything like that. Uh, the world made sense with them there. Justice Donal, open your eyes and see the truth. And this appears to be irrefutable evidence that the accused set off the explosions. No, there has to be some kind of mistake. This can't be the truth. Hello. Slams all of the things. Pretty much. Still, can't ex still can't accept it. You'll believe in your client, come what may. And why don't you cross-examine the defendant himself? This has got to be a trap. It's like Blackwell's controlling the entire game. Yeah, it seemed like he was waiting for me to bring up the body-moving issue. Why do you say that? Because he had... He had just the right argument when I pointed it out. And to really rub it in, he had a decisive piece of evidence up his... He had a decisive piece of evidence up his sleeve, too. He was trying to shake my faith in Mr. Starbuck and break me down. And making your cross-examine Mr. Starbuck at this point was part of his plan, too? Totally underhanded, but I wouldn't expect anything less from him. <laughs> uh, look at the- look at Taka when Simon, like, slams his- Arm, hand, down on the- on the desk. It's funny. Now let us hear from the arch-villain, the fiendish murderer himself. Famed astronaut, Solomon Starbuck. Hmm. 
Witness, your name and occupation, please. Solomon Starbuck, astronaut. Uh, how did this happen? Mr. Starbuck, you aren't looking very well. Will you be able to give testimony? Uh, no. Well, unfortunately, no is not an option. You are being accused of the Space Center bombing and the murder of Clay Terran. Please testify to these allegations. Do it? <laughs> Who's gonna stop you? <laughs> Aww. Um, mind if I take this suit off? It's getting really heavy. Silence. <laughs> it's not the weight of the suit that you feel. But of your sins. Oh my god. Simon, I'm 14 and this is deep much? God. Prepare to carry that weight for the rest of your life. Punish me to the moon. I don't care anymore. Or I defy me. Wow, that was super negative. Is he going to be alright up there? He'll be fine. I think... As long as he doesn't totally give up and say he did it, that is. All I did was support Clay over my shoulder and get us out of the rocket. Like always, I took the elevator down to the middle level and headed up, headed for the corridor. Clay had passed out by the time we got the order to evacuate. I didn't kill Clay, I was trying to save him. Hmm. So you assert you didn't set off the bombs or murder the victim. <laughs> but I bet you think I'm lying, right? And I reserve all judgment until after I've heard your full testimony. Uh, I'm sure you don't believe me. That you don't even believe I'm an astronaut. I don't think the judge doubts that. Who would wear a suit like that except an astronaut? Ah, uh, I will say that when I saw you in that movie. You appeared quite courageous. Though I suppose reality never quite li lives up to fantasy. Aww. <laughs> okay, but say, honestly, I, I've like been thinking the same thing. I'm like, you reminds me of Larry, but also not. I guess I'm just a big disappointment. <laughs> I really don't care what happens anymore. <laughs> oh no, he's completely given up. Aww. Who this? Hmm. What a depressing fellow. Why? 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 Why did it say question mark? If you were to join me in the clink. I imagine that annoying sighing of yours would rub off on the other inmates. Like, have it rubbed off on Prosecutor Blackwell a second ago? Oh! <laughs> huh? That was Blackwell sighing? <laughs> Mr. Starbucks' testimony contains a glaring contradiction. The question is, what does it mean? Even if Mr. Starbucks is my client. Starbucks? <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> it's my client. I can't be gun shy now. It's time to find out the truth. Huh. <laughs> oh god. Bombing report. Objection! Near the elevator. Mr. Starbucks! Mr. Starbuck, I need your testimony to be as accurate as possible. Was I not being accurate? No, because it's impossible for you to have taken the elevator down to the middle level. What makes you say that, Mr. Justice? Please recall where the bomb went off in launch pad 1. Also recall that after the explosion, the middle level ele elevator was engulfed in flames. Ah, oh, you're right. Which means... Exactly. The launch pad's elevator would have been unusable. In other words... Mr. Starbuck, your statement is decidedly inconsistent with the facts. What 
boots with a helmet. Oh, mission command. Mission command. You read me. Come in, please. This is mission command. I order you to pay attention. Stop this nonsense and answer my questions, Mr. Starbuck. Ugh, my helmet. Sir, are you okay? An oxygen tank! Oxygen concentration and body temperature declining. Requesting medical assistance. Uh, okay. Same. Mr. Starbuck, we are not in space right now. Please stop pretending you have lost consciousness and stand back up. I apologize, Your Honor. I forgot I was still on Earth. It'd be like that sometimes. I feel like we all just got a real glimpse of Solomon Starbuck, the astronaut. Yeah, he seemed more like an astronaut now than when he was doing all that sighing. Mr. Starbuck, could you please explain the inconsistency in your statements about how you used the middle-level elevator? I, uh, was nervous and said, I said the wrong thing. I'm sorry. We actually, uh, took a different route, I think. Different route. I hope you're able to deliver a straight story this time. Ugh! I'll get it right this time. Maybe. No, I mean probably. Probably. It's understandable to be nervous, but let me remind you, accuracy is paramount in court. Let's see, uh, my escape route. What I said before was a mistake. I, uh, I remember now. I took a different route. Maybe, probably. With a capsule and clay in my arms, I made, on, made my way down from the upper level. So, you're saying you escaped without using the elevator? That's right. There's a ladder that spans the upper and middle levels. I use that ladder to get to the middle to get to the middle level. Oh my god. Why do I struggle with saying middle level so much? I don't understand. Luckily the fire hadn't reached the ladder, so we could make our escape that way. And the capsule you mentioned, I suppose you mean the thing next to Mr. Terran here. Was the capsule that important that you'd risk your life to take it with you? It almost goes without saying, but yeah. That capsule contains asteroid samples. Therefore, it's invaluable as research material. With the spacesuit on, they weighed a ton, but securing the capsule was also important. I need you to answer to the best of your ability. Mr. Starbuck, please remember that your verdict is riding on your testimony. <laughs> Aww. Maybe I am guilty after all. I wonder if you can see the stars in prison. I bet it's more comfortable than a spaceship. Okay, third statement. Objection! Mr. Starbuck, why don't you just tell the truth? The, the truth? Um, let's see. The earth is blue. No, no, that's not right. So, uh, I guess the earth isn't blue? Yeah, that's it. The truth, Mr. Starbuck. Uh, the oxygen concentration is super low in this area. Prepare the emergency oxygen tanks. Mr. Justice, the witness appears confused. Please help draw out the truth from him. Mr. Starbuck, under the circumstances at the time, you couldn't possibly have reached the boarding lounge via the upper level route. Huh? Not as long as this was along the escape route. Ladder. To get down from the upper level to the middle level, where the launch pad one corridor is, you would have to go down the ladder, isn't that right, Mr. Starbuck? 
Well, of course. That was the only way we could escape. Objection! But how would that work? At the time, you were supporting Mr. Terran over your shoulder, were you not? Rep remember, he was in full space gear as well, putting him at over 200 pounds. Uh, oh. Well, it's easy on the moon. Gravity is only one-sixth of what it is on Earth. Objection! But the space center is located on Earth. Short of being an octopus climbing a ladder with an adult male in space gear in one arm. Well, carrying the capsule in your other is impossible, wouldn't you say? Oh. So, Mr. Starbuck, how exactly did you climb down that ladder with your arms full? Mr. Starbuck, come clean and tell us the truth. Now! Engineer! Where's that engineer? Oxygen leak detected due to a faulty maintenance. Evacuate immediately! What the? He's flying the coop! What the fuck? Help! I'm caught in the ceiling! Um, help? Anyone? Bailiff, prepare the cherry picker. We must launch our rescue mission at once. Well, that's one way to take off while being questioned. Rather prove his innocence so we can go to space again someday for real. Now then, Mr. Starbuck, do you think you can keep your feet planted on the ground? Yes, I apologize for losing control. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Mm -hmm, not that. Anything but that. What is going on? This isn't the Mr. Starbuck I know. It appears Space Boy is prone to deception. Witness. Yikes! Yes? I thought your story odd, but perhaps the inconsistencies can be explained as the result of a medical side effect. Secure Black Will, please! Please don't talk about that. What's going on? What are you talking about, Prosecutor Blackwell? Hmm. Now you already state that Space Boy is ironically terrified of going into space. That's why he took some precautions just before the launch. For you see, traces of these anti-anxiety drugs were found in his system. Oh, I sense things are about to nosedive. Got it all wrong. I told him during the investigation, too. I don't know anything about any drugs. I never took any medication, I swear. It was found in the system, but he doesn't rem remember, the remember taking it. How could that be? Somebody must have slipped them to me. But I guess maybe that's why I don't remember. Because of the side effects. Yeah, that's why I don't remember much about what really happened. What? Martyr! Mortem in the court! I can't get any useful testimony out of him if he doesn't remember anything. Well, this certainly explains why his testimony kept changing. Uh, why didn't he just tell me he couldn't remember? I guess he didn't want anybody to find out he was terrified of going into space. Uh, maybe I really did do it. Which brings us to the answer of our original question. Of how the witness climbed down the ladder with a dead body. It does? Hmm, so what is it? A dead man feels no pain and makes no complaints, Justice Tunnel. So the body was simply dropped down from the top of the ladder. Oh my, my see. And then the defendant could climb down with his free hand. Hey, do we have the autopsy report? Yeah. Again, no mention of any bruises. Surely... There would be some. Post-mortem, you know, if he was already dead. And then the defendant could climb down with his free hand. Objection. Drop the body down! Who would do such a disrespectable thing? Besides, dropping the body down would leave marks on the body itself. Apollo gets it. 
and you are capable of quick thinking. Yes, you are correct. And why do you bring it up as a point in the first place? Uh, really? Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> huh? What's this? It's the oxygen tank from the victim's spacesuit. It's ruptured, and I'm sure you can figure out why. You can't be implying it ruptured when the defendant dropped the victim's body. I am, where they fracture easily when struck. Objection! Even if that's true, the tank's explosion and shrapnel would leave its mark on the body. And according to the autopsy report, only the knife wound was found on the victim's body. Please, no updated autopsy report. <laughs> I can't handle it. You're clearly grasping at straws with this line of reasoning. Silence. No, you. A spacesuit isn't heavy for the sake of being heavy, just stone. It includes the latest technolo technological devices and is made for the fabric of tomorrow. Made of the fabric of tomorrow. This fabric is made to protect astronauts from the dangers of space. So falling a few earth yards would hardly leave a mark on the wearer. I call bullshit, yeah. I'm like, mm. Considering that fucking bulletproof vests don't protect, they protect against getting hit by a bullet like directly, but you will still get fucked up if you like get hit. <laughs> And also, how was someone able to stab through it? That's the biggest part. How was, if it's so high tech and uh, so protective, how was a fucking knife or whatever able to just stab right through it? Doesn't make sense. Objection! And shouldn't it be impossible to stab someone through it as well? It should. And yet, through sheer coincidence, the knife slipped through a weak spot in the suit's structure and found its way to its target. Well, what are the chances? We forget that our killer is an astronaut himself with knowledge of how the suits work. Mm -hmm. He's got me there. And now my argument has been proven. Space Boy killed the victim in the rocket and then dropped his body from the upper level. After climbing down, he shouldered the body and made sure the camera recorded them. There's no room for debate about these facts. It is clear that Solomon Starbuck was the only one who could have killed Clay Terran. Here, the report regarding the astronauts' oxygen ta tanks. Consider it my send-off gift. Feel free to use it as payment to cross the river Styx. Ugh. Hey, this report is pretty detailed. Display on the astronaut's left shoulder shows the oxygen remaining. After the incident, the victim's tank was ruptured and the remaining oxygen was 0%. The tank belonging to Starbuck, who claims to have carried the victim, said it was 80% full. Uh... Tanks were functioning properly at the time. At the time, look at that as a period. Let's see, this display of the astronaut's left shoulder shows how much oxygen remains. I guess that means these glowing cyan digits represent the, the amount of oxygen remaining. Aww. I'm done for. I'm going to prison instead of space. Space boy. Yes? Take heart. The bejeweled night sky is still beautiful, even when viewed through bars. You mean... The stars are seen from prison? That's right. Your cell will be your spaceship. Picture the view through the iron bars. 
It's like being an astronaut in your own craft for all time. <laughs> That's not a half bad thought. Um, Mr. Starbuck? Prosecutor Blackwell got him good. Spaceship prison cell, fly me, my guilt and my despair into the deepest, darkest space. And then, let's get sucked into a black hole together. Objection! Mr. Starbuck, you can't give up hope. Oh, yes, Apollo. You know, Clay really looked up to you. He said you are an incredible man. He said you'd never give up on your dreams and passion for space. No matter the situation. He said that? So don't give up now and help me prove your innocence. For the sake of the man who respected you and believed in you, Clay Terran. Clay! You're wasting your breath. Mm. Mm. Mm, okay. I. Apollo, thank you. I can see things clearly now. Sir Starbuck. I'm. I'm fine now. Thanks for reminding me of my life's mission. Right, we'll both be fine. I'll prove you're innocent, you'll see. And after that, we'll get you back into space. You've ignited the booster rockets of my soul. I'm on fire. I am Solomon Starstruck. Starbuck, not Starstruck. <laughs> Starbuck, astronaut. A cosmic hero chosen by the universe itself. This is no time to be whimpering and crying. I can't let you and Clay down. Balderdash. The sun. The moon. All of space is calling me. Solomon Saul Starbuck. I don't think... Uh, but, well, it's nice that the sun is calling you, but I don't think you should go visit. <laughs> Ready for launch. Begin the countdown. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Lift off! Well, I feel like I've witnessed an actual rocket launch. You cannot swim to space, dude. He can try. Hollow, he did it! You broke Prosecutor Blackwell's grip over Mr. Starbuck. I can't take the credit. You saw Mr. Starbuck. He pulled himself through. You simpletons are done mess massaging one another's egos. No matter how positive your mood, my advantage remains unshakable. I have but I have but to wait for the final guilty verdict. Isn't that right, your baldness? No. I can't let up now. We have to stop Blackwell. We have to see this through. Mr. Starbuck just has to make it back into space. I won't allow Clay's dream to remain unfulfilled. I gotta destroy Blackwell's argument somehow. Think, Justice. Think! If the only people at Launchpad 1 were Clay and Mr. Starbuck. And if Clay was already dead by the time this footage was taken. And the only person who could have killed him is Mr. Starbuck. So the only way to counter Blackwell's argument is... If I can prove that Clay was still alive when he arrived at the boarding lounge. In which case, I should be able to find some contradiction in the evidence itself. And let's see. About this data that we just received. It supposedly pr proves that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay's body in launch pad 1. But if I'm going to prove that false, then there must be something I can use here. Enough of this farce, your baldness. Let's have your verdict. Obstruction! Prosecutor Blackwell, you seem to be in quite a hurry to rush the verdict. What about this oxygen tank data you submitted just now? It says that Mr. Starbuck's tank had 80% remaining while Mr. Terrence had zero. Do you stand by the accuracy of this report? Of course. And I guess it simply means that it's faulty, as evidence goes. We will explain what you mean, Justice Donald. It's simple. This evidence contradicts the facts of the case. If you look here at the, de de the detailed <laughs> description, 
And you'll see what I mean. I hope you have some evidence, Mr. Justice, because I don't see what's so contradictory. Yes, Your Honor. Right away. This is the evidence that the oxygen tank report stands in contradiction to. The video. And how does this evidence present the contradiction? The problem is this part here. And that. Not the remaining oxygen in Mr. Starbucks' tank as he carries Mr. Mr. Turin. Mm, it appears to save 50. Yes, but according to the data, our client's tank had 80%. 80% remaining. The oxygen in the tank increased. I see your honor finds it as strange as I do. It's bad enough that there is a contradiction. But the increase in oxygen is beyond illogical. Oh, hey, you're absolutely right. What is going on here? Silence. Oh my god, shut up. Hm. I too find it odd that the oxygen remaining has increased. It would be as odd as if my rations were to increase. But what th what does that prove? It doesn't change the fact that it is the defendant carrying the victim's corpse. Objection! <laughs> I'm going to bet you don't get more rations because you don't abide by the rules. Either way, the oxygen remaining shouldn't increase. Just as your rations... Just as your rations don't increase. Therefore, this new information is critical. We can't overlook it. Silence. In what case do you have an answer to this riddle of the mysteriously increasing oxygen? You better not disappoint, or I'll, de or I'll declare the inconsistency as mere equipment malfunction. <laughs> mm, Prosecutor Blackwell has a point. I suppose it could be a simple malfunction. Mr. Justice, if you cannot provide an adequate counter-argument to this point, I'm afraid I must bring this trial to an end. So do you think you can explain why the remaining oxygen level increased? Of course I can. The thing to do at a time like this is turn my thinking around. Mr. Starbuck has no memory of it, but he claims to have carried clay. So this man with the 50 on his tank, tank ought to be Mr. Starbuck. But if anything, the display on his oxygen tank but it should have shown an 80. This is a clear contradiction between the, rep the report and the security footage. So what I should be asking is not why did the oxygen level increase, but what had to have happened to make it look like it increased. Am I making some kind of mistake in my base assumptions here? Well, Mr. Justice, we're waiting. Yes, Your Honor. I'm ready to answer. This is why the remaining oxygen appears to have increased. The victim was carrying the, the defendant. What if it was the other way around? The other way around? Would you care to explain, Mr. Justice? As you can see, Your Honor, both the men had their helmets on in this footage. But it turns out, this is where our base assumptions went astray. We assumed that it was Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Terran, but it was the other way around. It wasn't Mr. Starbuck helping Mr. Terran at all. It was Mr. Terran who was helping Mr. Starbuck to the boarding lounge. It, it, it was what? I can't get used to this. Mortar! Mortar! Mr. Justice! Do you mean to tell me that the person on the right in this image is the victim, Clay Terran? It's the only way the riddle of the increasing oxygen level can be solved, Your Honor. At this point in time, the remaining oxygen in the victim's tank was at 50%. And when the victim was found in the boarding lounge, his tank was at 0%. That's right! There's nothing contradictory about the oxygen level decreasing! This means Mr. Terran was alive as they made their escape to the lounge. Silence. Hmm, how short your memory is. Have you forgotten what you yourself proposed? Even if the victim was alive at this point in time. How did he descend the ladder with his arms full? Objection! Secutor Blackwell, you can't hurt me with a broken blade. Excuse me. It's true that we don't know how they got down the ladder. I suppose that matter needs further investigating. We have proven that Mr. Terran was alive when he reached the boarding lounge. This fact alone shatters your claims. It opens up the possibility that the victim could have been killed by a third party. There were two people who claimed to be the first on the scene. Can we truly trust their statements? Let's see. 
The two people were Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmos, right? You think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging. And it seems we'll have to hear the testimony of these first two people on the scene. Score! Come to think of it, Detective Arm should be here in court right now. Bailiff, could you please show Detective Arm to the stand? I... I have an announcement, everyone. What's the meaning of this? We're in the middle of a trial here. Please remain calm and listen carefully. Someone has reactivated the bomb. The bomb was diffused, but... 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 It's about to explode! Ex... Oh. Bomb? Now? Everybody run! Oh no! Everybody's panicking! I did not see that coming. Oh no, not at all. Headless chickens for the death wish. <laughs> the lot of you. Calm yourselves, a fair. A, a four. A four? A four, all else. Come on, Apollo. Let's get out of here. What about Mr. Starbucks' dream? And who will carry out Clay's final wish? I don't care what happens to me. I'm not letting some bomb blow the truth up forever. I. I. I refuse to let things end here. Apollo, this is no time to be dramatic. If we don't get out of here now, we're gonna die. Come on, this way. Hey, ouch, let me go. Apollo. Juniper? She hasn't evacuated yet. <laughs> Juniper, are you all right? Ap Apollo, no, not that way. Oh, hold on. In the middle of the Space Center bombing trial, we had another bombing accident. Incident, not accident. It was an accident. Hold on. Uh, 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 uh. There. And also... There. <laughs> Rip lawyer boy. Ha. Huh. Now we're playing as Phoenix. This one, this one destroyed courtroom number four. Furthermore, Apollo suffered massive injuries from being there when the bomb went off. Unfortunately, Juniper Woods was fingered as the courtroom bomber. Why, out of all of the fucking words, why is that the one they use? <laughs> Athena and I knew she had to be innocent, so we took her case on. Rephrase. Managed to clear Miss Woods. What's his name? But Apollo sustained further injuries when he was attacked by Ted Tonate. Apollo. 
Apollo is a tough guy, but this is taking its toll on him. Yeah, poor guy. Being attacked by Tonic like that on top of all his other injuries. Apollo is resting at the nearby Hickfield Clinic. Why the Hickfield Clinic? I've had some experience with that place myself. What an awful turn of events. I never thought he'd land in a hospital of all places. You must miss him too, huh? Now that you don't have anyone, anybody to tease. Don't worry, he's young. He'll heal quickly. I'll be back before you know it. It's been a while since I last saw Trucy look so down. He won the court case. Nobody feels much like celebrating. <laughs> Alright, enough of this, people! This is no time to be moping around. Now dry those eyes, both of you. Uh, you're the only one who's crying, Athena. Technicali technicalities, look. We have to- we have work to do! We have to take over! God, I can't read. Um, take over what exactly? Apollo Space Center case, of course. As no verdict's been reached, there's still a chance. I agree with Athena. We should pick up Mr. Starbuck's defense. We have to avenge our fallen comrade, right, Daddy? Apollo hasn't exactly fallen. He's still alive, you know. Good. Now that that's settled, let's get going. Come on, we gotta run. Wait, right now now? We better not be running the whole way. There she goes. I better go catch up. Uh, can you take care of the office, Trucy? Sure thing, Daddy. Let's be careful out there. In the meantime, I'm going to bake some cookies and fill up my magic panties for you. Okay, Trucy seems to be feeling a little better. You can always count on Athena to perk everybody up with her enthusiasm. Oh, she's back! Don't mind me, just forgot a few things. Wallet, phone, documents, my bag... It's more like you forgot everything. I can always count on Athena for that too. Alright you two, let's be careful out there. Our client is one Solomon Starbuck. He's so famous, even I've heard of him. That's right! He's a super famous astronaut who works at the Cosmos Space Center. He was actually up in outer space seven years ago. You seem to know quite a bit about him. Oh, I'm all excited to meet the man. Hold on, wait. Uh, I just want to check something. If, it, if it's this one or the next one. Oh, uh, next one, I can't see. That's cool. Aww. Wow, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. Apollo told me all about you. You're Phoenix Wright, Apollo's mentor, right? Yes, that's right. Hmm, mentor has a nice ring to it. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Starbuck. Mr. Wright and I have got you covered. Ah, oh, and you're the new kid that Apollo told me about. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Huh? Y you mean other than at your trial? I don't think so. I guess so. My mistake. Aww. Your memory isn't what it used to be. My mind and body are kaput. Same goes for my life. I mean, I'm so astronomically unlucky that I had to had a bomb go off in the middle of my trial. Trying to defend me would be like trying to enter the stratosphere without a spacecraft. Yikes. He seriously got to stop depressing himself. Cheer up, Mr. Starbuck. Besides, that thing you said about entering the stratosphere, that just means we shine like shooting stars, right? Like shooting stars, huh? You know, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? After all, that's what we were all put out put on this earth to do, right? To shine like stars. 
Guess I should shouldn't mention the fact that shooting stars burn out in a flash. Oh yeah! Here we go! Three, two, one! To the stratosphere and beyond! Yeah, I feel alive now. You can go ahead and ask me anything you want. Is that really all it takes? Hmm. So you have no memory at all of the incidents. Aww. I'm so ashamed. The memory of the time is as black and clouded as the dark nebula. Still, it's strange you don't remember a thing. Are you sure you didn't take one of those anti-anxiety pills like they said at the trial? You got it all wrong. I told them during the investigation too. I don't know anything about any drugs. I never took any medication, I swear. It is true I developed a fear of space because of what happened seven years ago. And I was taking medication secretly every now and then when my anxiety got bad. And a fear of space is not something an astronaut can brag about, you know. Oh. The so-called Hat 1 miracle. That must have been a terrifying experience. And I'm still think still an astronaut at heart. Come what may. I would never take dr drugs that might impede my performance just before a launch. A launch meant everything to me. That's more certain than a theory of relativity. He seems like a completely different person now. This is the face of the astronaut, I know. The tranquilizers were found in your system. Aww. Yeah, see, that's the thing. But I don't know why. I'm done for. If you didn't take them, then maybe somebody slipped them to you. Exactly. That's what I thought. It must have been the real culprit. My medication was in my locker. Anybody could have gotten their hands on it. Maybe the real culprit also planted the detonator switch in your pocket. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I've been framed. I'll say, they even managed to plant your prints on the switch before slipping it in. It's a real possibility. Do you remember anything else that might be relevant? Anything at all, no matter how small, like about the murder weapon, for example. Hmm, a knife. I think it came from one of these Space Sender's utility kits. Utility kits? Yeah, staff who work on machinery a lot are given these special toolkits to use. All the technicians have them, so I doubt you could prove whose knife it is. As I recall, your last trip into space was seven years ago, right? That's right, it was. A pretty rough experience. During that mission, you had all kinds of problems with the craft. You did? What kind of problems? Power failure, oxygen leakage, busted radio, cracked windows, Lose control of the column, the heat shield came off as we were entering the atmosphere. I thought I was a goner. But I managed to make it somehow, with the popsicles and ice packs from the freezer. No wonder they dubbed it the Hat 1 miracle. It's a miracle you made it back! Space is a boundless place, that's why it continues to captures, capture people's imaginations. But the vastness of space shows us how insignificant we are in the scheme of things. The darkness just goes on and on forever, and ever, and ever, without end. There was nobody else there. Nobody was gonna come and save me. I was all alone. All alone, with nothing to listen to. But the sound of my own breathing and heartbeat. I don't think they send like one man crews to space. Right? Like they need to have at least a few people. I kept scrambling to make repairs. But I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. An experience like that would make anybody afraid to go up into space.
Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck kind of irresponsible thing is that? With the experience you had, weren't you dreading this mission? What? No way. Of course not. Even now, I want to go up into space so bad, I can barely stand it. Yeah, they do send more than one. So I don't understand why they sent him alone. I want to shake off the Earth's gravity at escape velocity and spin around weightless. You have to admit it was pretty harrowing. Aren't you even a tiny bit afraid? I was afraid. Of course I was. Still am. But space is man's final frontier. An unknown world. The cosmic truth is out there waiting for us somewhere. The cosmic truth, huh? And I guess there are people looking for the truth in every walk of life. No matter how afraid I am, I'm sure I can manage. If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. One thing's for sure, Mr. Starbuck's passion for space is undeniably the real deal. The victim, Clay Terran, he was kind of like your protege, wasn't he? Well, he wasn't a big, exaggerated deal like Master and Apprentice or anything like that. But Clay did think of me as his mentor. The mentor and the protege. What a combination they must have been. Aww. With this encouragement, I knew I could get over my fear and go back into space. But now... Clay must have been very encouraging, huh? Yeah, it's funny, really. Whenever I'd hear him shout, You're fine! I always got the feeling everything really was gonna be just fine. You're fine? Apollo says I'm fine and you're fine all of the time, too. And I always feel encouraged, too, whenever I hear him shout it. Yeah, Clay and Apollo were best buds. They used to come visit the space center a lot, ever since they were high school kids. One day, out of the blue, Clay even told me he wanted to be my protege. Those two hung around the space center so much, they were like a part of the staff. One time, during zero-g training, I started to panic a little bit. And the two of them took turns shouting, You're fine! over the radio. It was a simple thing, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. So I'm fine, and you're fine. You we're like Apollo and Clay's secret phrases, huh? I wish I could ask Apollo more about Clay and their relationship now. Speaking of Clay... How do you suppose he climbed down the ladder with you over his shoulder? Sorry, but I can't even begin to imagine. But he actually did climb down that ladder, so a way has to exist. Aww. From the freedom of space to the walls of a cell. But the prosecutor said the dark night sky isn't half as bad through barred windows. You're fine! Solomon Salt Starbuck is fine! Everything is going to be alright! Huh? And Athena Sykes is fine! Come on, Mr. Wright, you too! Do I really have to? Phoenix Wright is fine. I can't hear you! F Phoenix Wright is fine! I'll get you back into space yet! Space? <laughs> space yet, Mr. Starbuck. Believe in your own innocence. And have faith in us. Apollo believed in you wholeheartedly. And that's good enough for me. I believe in you too. Thank you. Thank you, both of you. I'll put my faith in you. And I vow to make it back into space. All I need first is a not guilty verdict. It sure feels nice to reassure ourselves every now and then that we're all fine. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's get our investigation of the space center started, pronto. Good idea. Let's go. Wow, I was wondering what kind of place this space center would be. It almost looks like an amusement park of the future. Yeah! Did you know they even let the public see their rockets up close? Oh, so check this- check it out! Look at how brightly the Gyaksa logo shines in the sunlight above the entranceway. I really dig the stars and rocket motif. 
He's got going. Yaksa, huh? Isn't that the new name of the Federal Space R&D program? Yeah, but why the strange acronym? I mean, what is GYA supposed to stand for? Galaxy? Now we're in. Then the whole thing would be something like Galaxy Exploration Agency. Which, if you ask me, I'd have abbreviated to GAXA or even Gaia. <laughs> Hmm, I guess so. Oh, I know. Maybe the person who came up with the name just really likes the letter Y. This exchange is beginning to feel oddly like deja vu. Anyway, this place is more than just a research facility. It's also a tourist attraction. Tourist attraction? Oh, make me laugh. It's a monument to the human race. Electric scooter. Full speed ahead. Who is this geezer and what's what's he want? Look upon me and look well. Behold the greatest po great power of space science. And me, but you are. My glorious name is Yuri Cosmos. I am the director of the Cosmos Space Center. The center of the cosmos. Us? That was pretty groan inducing. If this person is the Space Center's director, then that means... Aha! Uh -huh. So you were the one to first... One of the first to discover Clay's body, weren't you? And who was the first to find the victim? Actually, there were two of them. The Space Center director. Yuri Cosmos. And Detective Candace Arm. That is correct. I was honored to be the very first man in all of space and time to discover the body. But this talk of the incident, are you by chance... The space police? You can't tack the word space onto just any old thing, you know. We're Mr. Starbucks lawyers, and we're here to investigate this case. Oh, and we're Earth lawyers, by the way. Ah, yeah, ah, I see, yes, I've heard about you. In that case, by my esteemed privilege, I grant you permission to investigate. I trust you are appropriately grateful. Now go ahead. Have at it. I can already tell he's going to be nothing but trouble. Don't let him hear you say that, or you'll see what trouble really is. Let's just be professional and ask him about when he found the body, okay? So as director, what do you do here at the Space Center specifically? Defend peace across the galaxy and promote space development in this country. No matter what obstacles stand in our way, we keep going. For the sake of mankind. I believe I used the word specifically in my question. Attention all personnel. To your break stations. Prepare for break. Oh, I get it. You just wander around and tell people what to do in a self-important manner. That is exactly right. Because I am an important man, my manner is important. Mr. Wright, this man doesn't get sarcasm. Well, there's bound to be some people like that, here in the boundlessness of space. What's that? You want to know what it's that makes me important specifically? Very well, I will tell you. It was the central figure of the Hat One project. You may proceed to be appropriately impressed. Now go ahead, have at it. I might be more impressed if I knew what he did for it, specifically. Eh. Could you tell us what you know about the incidents from the other day? Hmm. I refuse. What? Explaining is a job for common folk, not the director of this, director of the center of the cosmos. My testimony which will go down in space history, will be heard in the courtroom. What? So does that mean you'll be taking the stand tomorrow? That is correct. I will be. The most glorious witness in the history of mankind. I'm not 
not sure if he really understands what being a witness is all about. Looks like Director Cosmos is the type that only talks about what he wants to talk about. And let's at least try asking to ask him about the things he might be willing to, to open up about. The Hat One was a rocket that was launched into space seven years ago, correct? And despite numerous problems, it somehow made its way back home. Hmm, I suppose it is part of my job to educate ignorant young folks, folks like you. Very well, I will impart to you the complete story of the Hat One project. Oh, uh, thank you very much. And one's noble mission was to collect samples from an asteroid. And Mr. Starbuck was the pilot for that flight. Eventually, the Hat One reached its planned orbit. And where it launched the Hope Probe towards the asteroid belt. From there, the Hope Probe began its long, long, lonely journey into the far reaches of space. Then, after a terrifying struggle, the Hat One returned safely to Earth. That struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One Miracle occurred, right? Correct. And it truly was a miracle. Of course, they just had to turn it, turn the ordeal into a movie. As for the Hope Probe, it did eventually arrive safely at its destination. It obtained a few s samples from the asteroid and returned to Earth but a few days ago. And what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. We haven't had time since they just came back the day before Terran's murder. Regrettably, we've had no time to inspect the samples due to everything that has occurred. But this puts our space development program ahead of other countries by several years! That's quite impressive. I guess this guy isn't just a loudmouth braggart, after all. In the golden age of space development, our predecessors were successful in bringing a moon rock back. That is the greatest achievement in the history of this space center. The public fell in love with space and all of its glorious potential. A moon rock, huh? I remember that being big. Our endeavors with the moon rock lives on in our work with those asteroid samples. I want to bestow new hopes and dreams for the future upon mankind once again. That is my mission, as the man who stands at the center of the cosmos. Oh, that sounds interesting. I hear there's lots of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids this, these days. They say the results could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. What? Bite your tongue. It is not for anything so base as money or politics. Politics? Politics. <laughs> politics? It's all for the brilliant future that awaits mankind, and all for my illustrious mission. With the recent budget cuts, my staff tells me finances are tight, but I won't hear it. Hmm, I guess even a space program has to watch its budgets. By the way, you seem awfully knowledgeable about this kind of thing, Athena. Huh? Oh, well, you know, I thought I'd better brush up for the case. Is that so? Well, I will be on my way. As you can see, I am very, I am a very busy, and very important man. Galactic scooter, fire up the main engine, max battle speed, and engage. That thing is surprisingly fast. I guess I better get going too. You bet. Let's make it so. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by whatever is outside. Or I guess, outside. <laughs> Okay, sure. So this is where Mr. Terran was murdered. Yeah, this is the lounge. Let's see that diagram the police made again. 
Right now we're in the main building here on the right side on the third floor. Clay and Mr. Starbuck fled here from launch pad one after the explosion. You're there. No admittance without express permission. We're Mr. Starbuck's lawyers. We've come to investigate. Sorry, nobody gets in without permission. Not even the police is super ten police superintendent. And have Detective Fulbright getting mad at me. So Detective Fulbright is here, huh? Yeah, he's in the launch pad one cor corridor. We'll get clearance from him, and then we'll talk. Leave it to me. I'm great at getting intel out of Detective Fulbright. Let's see. What trick should I use on him today? I don't know if I should be grateful or afraid. So, to get to the launch pad one corridor. You just have to go through that door with the blue rocket on it, I think. Wait. That door. It looks awfully familiar. Could I there, boss? This is the door Clay and Mr. Starbuck used during their escape from the launch pad. Oh, that explains it. Hold on, wait. Huh. Interesting. The, uh, knob thing is different. To the left. <laughs> hey! And the fingerprint system has been deactivated, so I think we can just pass through. Now well, come on, let's go! So this is it, huh? This is the corridor the two of them used in their escape. Yep, this is the only thing connecting launch pad 1 with the main building. I see police tape down at the other end. I guess we won't be looking at the launch pad. After the explosion, the whole this whole corridor must have been filled with smoke. And the launch pad itself was probably a sea of flames. Must have been pretty scary for them. Now where could Detective Fulbright be? Hey, I think that's him over there! Hmm, what should I do? Which path is the path of justice? He seems to be lost. That's funny. This corridor is a straight shot. Huh? Ah, it's you lawyer people. Welcome to the Space Center. Enjoying a relaxing day off, are you? Here, f here for a little rocket sightseeing? We're here to investigate the scene, same as you. Do you have any info to share? Boss, if he acts all at all reluctant to give us information. We hit him with the whatever shall we do act. I'm sure he'll fall for it. Got it? Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? Info on the case, huh? Alright, I'll gladly share some with you. Huh? What just happened? Detectives and lawyers seeking truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you info bandits. I'm in a generous mood today. I don't know. There's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. Well, we need information, so let's run with it. If you say so. <laughs> Detective Fulbright, could you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard and we can't get in. Oh, whatever shall we do? That's an easy one. I'll let them know over there to let you in. Investigate to your heart's content. Take a week if you need it. A month, even. Shall I have some snacks de delivered? What if my men give some mean neck rub? Uh, no. It's okay, but thanks. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. Detective Fulbright is acting sickeningly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. Do you think he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case, it's making our lives way easier. You were here at the Space Center at the time of the incidents, weren't you, Detective? Oh, neck massage. I'm like these neck giving massages. <laughs> Actually, we used to have this, like, teacher in 6th and 7th grade. And, uh, 
I believe on like Fridays, like before school was out, we had like 10 minutes where we just massaged each other. It was great, honestly. You were here at the Space Center at the time of the incidents, weren't you, Detective? That's right, I was here on a security security assignment. These are required to secure rocket launches now. I didn't know that. Um, yes. Well, you know us. To serve and protect. Ha 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 The explosions occurred while I was here on duty, so I started leading the evacuation. I was leaving out a lot of details, but okay. Could you tell us more about what happened? Of course. A bomb went off on the second second floor of the main building. Right after that, the one over in launch pad 1 also blew sky high. So I immediately instructed the visitors and the employees to evacuate to the shelter. The shelter? That's right. There's an evacuation sh shelter in the basement of the space center. It's there for accidents and emergencies and the like. So, where were you when the first bomb went off? I was on duty on... Pardon? On the fourth floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. The elevator wasn't working on account of the explosion. And the stairs on the second floor were destroyed, so we couldn't go that way. And wasn't it impossible to get down to the basement shel shelter? No, we lowered an emergency ladder from a fourth floor window and escaped that way. It was a folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable. But at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I left to take another look around for any other survivors. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal! But climbing down an emergency ladder kinda sounds fun. Thank you for your answers, Detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment, I have some more information to share with you. But don't tell Prosecutor Blackwell, okay? Wow, and Prosecutor Blackwell usually has you on a short leash too. Well, never mind that. Ha <laughs> ha. I thought you should know that there was a witness. Could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing. The witness was a Space Center employee who was on the fourth floor. When she was climbing down, she looked through a window into the third floor lounge. So, she was looking into the crime scene from the outside. That's right. It was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Not that I know what she she saw exactly yet, though. You don't? That's the most important thing of all. Ha ha ha. Don't you worry. I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be somewhere here in the space center. You might even run into her. A fourth floor employee, huh? Alright. Thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. Gee, you're sure being cooperative, Detective. A little too cooperative, even. Yes, well, actually, I... Something you can't talk about. Yes, something like that. Anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Mm. Well, I'll be on my way now. What was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm going to get it out of him the next time I see him. Okay. I'm not so sure I'll talk about it, though. Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the boarding lounge. <laughs> ah, you too. Detective Fulbright has granted you permission to investigate. He also said I should bring you some snacks or give you a neck rub, too, if you'd like. Huh? Oh, uh, that's all right, but thank you for the offer. Well, time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now let's see, where's that diagram again? So this lounge is on the third floor of the main building. And according to Apollo, this is where he believes the third party killed his friend. Well, let's stop the recap and start looking for traces of this third person then. Read my mind, Athena. We'll make that our first priority. 
There's just one problem though. This room. It's just so big. Don't worry. We can use this to help us. Space Center pamphlet. For tourists? Yep. Picked it up at the entrance. The maps inside should come in handy. Let's see. Yep. Here it is. A map of the lounge. This is the door we went through to talk to Detective Fulbright. Yeah. That's a door with a fingerprint recognition lock. Well, I guess this map will give... We'll make things a little easier. Yeah! No more excuses. Let's track down the third person. Wait. There's just one more thing. How long is this, actually? A bit. How long is it? A bit. What's that strange creature moving around outside the window? Oh, boss! It's just a holographic image. Oh, yeah, I knew that. Oh, that's a relief. I was just like, oh my fucking god, is that Gordy? Better call Lara. <laughs> there should be a button somewhere in this room to turn the image on and off. That's what it says in the pamphlet, anyway. Lara, <laughs> we found Gordy. <laughs> The only reason you're so eager to start is so that you can push that button, isn't it? And what's wrong with that? Let's just look for for the button while we're looking for cute clues. Caught. All right, fine. Let's get investigating. No matter how I look at it, all I can think of is torture device. And I guess it's a training device for getting used to zero gravity. Uh-oh, Athena has not glint in her eye. Is she thinking about trying that thing out? I should try to stop her. I'm afraid she'll just outmuscle me. Hey, Mr. Wright! Look at that up there! Some kind of fragment. It's stuck in tight. Oh, so that's what that's what the glint was all about. That color looks familiar. I think it's part of an oxygen tank. I think you're right. If that's here. Means Clay's tank ruptured after they arrived at the boarding lounge. So Prosecutor Blackwell's theory that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay down the ladder must be wrong. This proves that both the ast astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. <laughs> Way to go, Apollo! So it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of this room. Well, let's check. Drumroll, please. Ta da! The Space Center pamphlet. We were here at this place that says boarding. We're here at this place that says boarding, lo boarding lounge. Lounge one. <sighs> yes. Here are the three doors. Hmm, let's call them lefty, righty, and downy. We'll usually say west, east, and south in a case like this, you know. Details, details. Anyway, take a look at the west door. That door with the rocket icon leads to launch pad 1. I know, because it says here on the map, launch pad 1 corridor. So that's where we were with the detective. It was filled with smoke after the explosion. Right. Next up, the right-hand side of the map, or east in your world, That's the door with the satellite dish icon to signify communication, aka the control room. Yep, it definitely says control room. Looks like it has another door on the opposite side. You can communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from there. So it's the center of the space center. The space center center, if you will. Does everybody start to talk like Director Cosmos after they've been here a while? And it thinks that they built a new command center on the 6th floor. That's what they used for the HAT-2 mission, so this control room was empty at the time. I always wanted to see the inside of a mission control room. Since we're here... I'd love to do that too, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to. I want to get curious kids like you out. So the door is protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director can go through. 
I mean, not much security. I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. So apparently, the lock is also hooked up to a backup generator in case of emergencies. Okay, what about the last door? This lower door. Oh, excuse me, I mean south door. It leads to the elevators. This is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Yep, and of course, there was no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. But the elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Well, that's about it for the three musket doors of the boarding lounge. Thanks, understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. That's why I thought we'd better have a good grasp of where all the doors go. To the right of the elevators. There's another amazing piece of equipment. Look on the surface of the moon, it says. Oh boy! I want to try it! Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could do, do mid-air somersaults. We're still on Earth, remember? Besides, it's connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I could jump really high. There's a sign on the wall that very clearly says, don't jump too high. Oh, what good is this thing? Uh, didn't, didn't I say in the beginning, walk on the surface of the moon? Mm -hmm. Oh, there. What's this? A trapdoor? It's a trash chute. The cleaning robots throw the garbage out from here. The robots do the cleaning. What a futuristic world we live in. I just hope they don't revolve like they do in science fiction movies. No way! All the robots here are very nice. Actually, wasn't there one in the launch pad one corridor? We can say hi to it if you want. Roombas exist. Mm, examine the gutter. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take this cover off then. What's this? It looks like a metal jelly bean. It's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two, two to three millimeters in di diameter. <laughs> in diameter. 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 Millimeters in diameter. Words. <laughs> Let's see. That would make the caliber. 0.10? Caliber refers to the, di to the diameter of a gun's barrel, right? Yes, but I've never heard of a 0.10 caliber gun before. This bullet must be for a special kind of gun. Phoenix uses millimeters. I bet if you tried firing a bullet this small with a regular sized gun, it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must have been a really small gun. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean, we're in the bottom left of this, on the south door side of the room, according to this map. That's pretty far from where Clay's body was. Maybe the police didn't think to look here. Yeah, maybe we should have taken the Fulbright to accidentally hand us just the card we need. We stand the metric system all day, every day. I wonder what this big knob is for. It looks like the knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I don't. But I think that's where the similarities end. I mean, it's behind a glass pane. What kind of stove would require knob security like this? It's been a while since we roasted the Imperial system. <laughs> True. Well, the knob is straight up and down, so if it was for a stove, the burner would be off. Right. 
if it was for a stove. Still, I wonder what it's really for. Something turned on by a knob that's not a stove. Hmm... How about a rocket engine? If you had to start the engine here, the rocket would take off before you could get in. And I guess we all can say... All we can say now is that it's a mystery knob. I think you're a mystery knob, God. Hmm... I need to examine the, the door. Let's see. Okay. This door is... Where's the pamphlet? Here we are. It's the door to the corridor that leads to, the, to launch pad 1. We went through it earlier when we went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They say the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. This thing beside the door. This must be the fingerprint recognition device. Which reminds me, I think Prosecutor Blackwell talked about it at the pop about it at the trial. The notion of a third party on launch pad one is utterly absurd. Just to enter the area from the lounge. One must pass through a door guarded by a fingerprint recognition device. And allow me to state up front that there are precious few with the clearance to do so. And does this mean that the bomber's prints were verified by the system? The number of authorized personnel was supposed to be really small. Voila! Fingerprint powder! I brought it! I brought it just in case something like this came up. I found it at the office. I've been just itching for a chance to use it. Oh no, Athena found... Found Phoenix's white powder. <laughs> oh no. Wow, we need to think ahead. Now let's dust the fingerprint recognition device and see what we can find. You got it! Now to sprinkle some here and a little over there, and... Was that supposed to be blowing? Let's see what we have here. We got something! Aw, uh, it's only a single set of prints. Uh, isn't that a good thing? I sure wish we could figure out whose prints these are. Although I doubt we'll be so lucky as to get the culprit's prints on the first try. His coke stash. <laughs> well, I'm willing to bet that Detective Fulbright has some fingerprint data. Right, and there's the security footage of the store too. Yes, there is. It came up in court the other day. I wish we could see the part of the footage just after this bit. Oh, because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let's ask the detective. With the mood he's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can find him again once we're done with this room. Oh, there. There's some kind of panel with two buttons on it here. Just push it! That's the invariable principle of buttons. There are such things as buttons left unpushed. Hey! The giant holographic image disappeared! Yeah. Well, that side of the wall seems kind of barren without it now. Still, let's see if we can't find anything new with the image off. The holographic image off, the screen is completely black. Which for some reason makes me think of losing an argument to Prosecutor Blackwell in court. But at least it's got my brain wrapped up. I come up with the best ideas at times like these. Does that know you how to say? Okay, cool. Um, from to the left. Ah! Sneaky, sneaky. Hey, Mr. Wright! Take a look at this! It looks like a bullet hole. Right find Athena. It's pretty big! Whoever fired the shot must have been using a pretty large gun. You think so? Based on my experience, I'd say this was fired from a regular pistol. Well, whatever size it was, somebody fired a gun in here, right? Apparently. This is an important fact. Do you see a bullet anywhere? No, the police might have taken it, though. 
Let's ask Detective Fulbright about this bullet hole later. These are apparently oxygen capsules for recovery after a training session. I wonder if they can change your voice. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Huh? It didn't do a thing. Uh, it's not helium, Athena. It's oxygen. Dumbass. Lamau. Okay, there's something I'm missing. There's so much text here. Examine the ropes that indicate how the body was lying. Okay, well, maybe that. So this is where they discovered Clay. Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let's take a look at the photo. So he was stretched out like this then. Huh? What's that thing that looks like a thermos? That's the thing that Prosecutor Blackwell mentioned when I was in court with Apollo. He said that it contains asteroid samples. Alright, Director Cosmo Cosmos mentioned something about that too, didn't he? But they were brought back only five days ago by the probe that they had one launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see? Let's think about that after we've solved the case, okay? Welcome to the Space Center, guests. Welcome. Yikes! What in the world? Why does why does it have boobs? My name is Panko. P O N C O. Panko. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you looking around? Choose one. I will guide you. It's a robot. I am not a robot. I am Panko. Psychological observation and navigation companion. P O N C O. Panko. Well. I'm glad we got that cleared up. Oh, Panko! I've missed you! Huh? Do you know this thing, Athena? Oh, uh, she, uh, showed us around the last time when I came here with Apollo. Oh, you're such a good girl, Panko. That's a good girl! Oh, thank you. Thank you. I am so happy. So very happy. Wow, a guide robot. That's pretty cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Nice to meet you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Huh? Ouch. That hurt. Oh, she has to register people she meets for the first time. Please register him, Panko. Certainly. Commencing guest regist registration. Please tell me your name. The nickname is fine too. His name is Phoenix. A bit overly familiar, but I'll allow it. Phoenix. Please let me get a good look at your face. Oh, uh, sure. Registering. Facial registration sequence complete. We are now officially friends. Nice to meet you, Phoenix. Huh. This robot is pretty, pretty cute. You made a friend, boss. Isn't he great? Phoenix, Athena, allow me to guide you right this way. Oh, goody. Let's go, boss. Go where? Oh wow! What is this place? Is... is that rocket real? Welcome, welcome! The Space Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Learn about the history of our nation's space development in the Hadron Project. The rocket is just a replica, but it's the same size as the real one. The Space Museum? Oh, here it is on the map! Okay, so it's on the exact opposite side of the main building from Launchpad 1. Ask me anything. Anything I, I will explain. And this is quite the place. I can't believe we get to see a rocket this close up. 
This is a replica of the Hat 1 that was launched 7 years ago. It's exactly like the real Hat 1 inside and out. Its little brother, the Hat 2, was supposed to launch the other day. I wonder if Panko knows why the launch was cancelled. Over there is an exhibit about the launch 7 years ago. Check it out! Check it out! Face suits, photos, newspaper articles. I'd like to come here again on the day off. Hey, what's this a photo of? Phoenix, as the staff of the Hat One project. Oh, here's Mr. Starbuck. He looks so young and so different. Ha, ah, and that's. that's. What is it, Athena? Is something wrong? Oh, nothing. I just thought Mr. Starbuck looked really young too, that's all. Well, it was seven years ago after all. The young guy standing next to Mr. Starbuck. It's Clay Terran, the victim. Hold on, how old would he be then? If it was seven years ago? He's 23? 16? Oh yeah, I can see he's wearing the school uniform. Underneath, I just noticed that. That's cute. So they were mentor and protege even way back then. And he's even got one of the staff jackets. He looks just like a regular staff member. No, Clay was still a student then. He just borrowed one of Solomon's old jackets. Oh, okay, that makes sense. They would have still been in high school seven years ago. Yeah, I did the math myself. Everybody looks so happy. The Space Museum, museum is great! With fantastic exhibits! This area used to be Launch Pad 2. That's why the only entrance is on the third floor. Wouldn't it be better if they just made a new ground floor entrance instead? There was talk of it, but they had to scrap their plans because of the budget cuts. Budget cuts! Budget cuts! We need more money! Money! Who would record that kind of information into a guide robot? While it was in space, the Hat 1 launched a probe called Hope. The Hope probe collected some samples from an asteroid and returned five days ago. That's what Director Cosmo said too. He told us it came back the day before Clay was killed. And here it is, the Hope space probe. Hmm, I think I've seen that logo somewhere before. Let's see... Yeah! The capsule that the victim was carrying. I think it had the same logo. I think it can be seen in the photo attached to the aut autopsy report. Maybe she'll give me some more info if I show, her, show it to her. Sure, let me just... Let's go out this way. The way the Space Center launch pad is set up is really cool. Would you like me to tell you about it? Would you? The setup of the launch pad? Oh, gentle on my spiky-haired mind. I want to know! I want to know! Phoenix wants to know, too. Great. Now Athena's got a case of Poncoitis. Hooray! I will tell you, then. The rocket is built right inside the launch pad structure. When the rocket is complete, it's moved along with the launch pad over the rails. and brought into position at the launch site. Isn't it cool? Isn't it? We used to have a big budget, so that's how we could build it all. It's very cool. A grand setup that suits an important place like the Space Center. I guess everyone is hoping for a bigger budget next year, myself included. I'm guessing the whole thing is operated from the control room, huh? That it is, but it can also be operated from the new command center, too. Either way, the safety lock in the boarding lounge has to first be disengaged. I guess before a big move like that can be carried out, there are all kinds of pr procedures. I would love to see the launch pad being moved. When's the next one scheduled? When's the next one scheduled for? 
searching data. All future plans have been put on hold because of the bombing and the murder of it. Which is perfectly understandable. Well, when was the last time it was moved? Searching data. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That answer isn't in my answer database. I guess Paco can only answer certain questions. Okay, let me show you the autopsy report apparently. Panko, you recognize this capsule here on the top right. Checking registered data. I know, I know. It's the Hope capsule. It was carried inside the Hope probe. It contained the asteroid samples, right? Yes, it was designed to store the samples gathered by the Hope probe. It's been stored in the safe in launch pad 1 ever since it returned to Earth. I'm still, still I'm still I'm still very off put by the fact that this robot has tits. <laughs> it must not be removed. It must not be removed. Don't worry, Panko. The people in charge already know what happened. They do? They do? I must ask them later. So the capsule was being kept in Launchpad 1, huh? Maybe Clay was trying to carry it to safety after the explosion. The Space Center staff must have been really excited to finally get the capsule back. But it's a pity this incident occurred before they got the chance to check up, check the contents. Well, the police took it as evidence, so they'll have to wait a little longer. Well, we certainly learned a lot about the Space Museum. Space? Space Museum. Thank you, Funko. You explained it. You explained everything very well. I love to explain. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You two are like old friends. It's hard to believe you just met recently. <laughs> it's because Panko is so friendly. Well, what should we investigate next? Let's go find Detective Fulbright. We have to act. We have things to ask him about. Let's see, the security footage and the fingerprint data, was it? Okay. Then let's go back to the launch pad 1 corridor. Bye, Panko! See you later! Come again, come again. And don't forget to visit the gift shop. Or Panko. Oh, what a... What does it say? Dickin... Dickinshian? Dickensian? I was like, is that an A? Is that a something else? I, can't, I couldn't tell. What a Dickensian life. We are all forced to lead. Hmm. What should I do? Which path is the path of justice? There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost. Even though it's a straight corridor. So I'll be still in a co cooperative mood as well then. If he doesn't cooperate, then I'll just have to use my powers on him. You don't mean that lady in distress bit. I thought there's a butthole. You found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. Oh, sweet. You did! Our team found that too. It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. Detective Arm? That's right, a warning shot for the defendant. Was it really such a high threat situation that she needed to do that? I'm afraid I don't know the details, but what with Detective Arm gone and all. But I thought there were two people who discovered the crime scene together. We already know Director Cosmos will testify, so tomorrow will be about what he knows. Hey, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as the main course. I hope it goes down easy. Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some prints we found in the boarding lounge. Oh uh, yes, I just happen to have compiled the print data of everyone related to this case. I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. It sure took a while, though. Whoa, he got Apollo and my prints. He even got prints for all of the robots. 
he got the what for what's now? I guess my black will set to dig deep. Fulbright didn't bother to ask how deep. Huh? Clay's fingerprints are here too. I personally removed his glove during the investigation. We had to get his fingerprints to confirm his identity after all. I still can't believe he took off his glove to get his fingerprints. Yeah, well, you can't blame me for thinking they're important in this case. There are a lot of doors that require fingerprint verification in the lounge. So depending on whose prints we find, it can completely change the tide for both sides. Makes sense. After all, Corporate's prints did get them past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, and take this picture. It might come in handy. Isn't this just a photo of the launch pad one door? Yep, but Prosecutor Blackwheel seemed really interested in it for some reason. Huh? What's so important about this door? It's me, but boy could you see the gears in his head go into hyperdrive at it. Sounds like this is going to be a major point in contention tomorrow. Of contention. Hey, don't forget about the print comparison, boss. Right. Detective, Detective, Detective Fulbright, do you think you could run the test for us right now? You just leave it to me. And justice we trust. Okay, here we go. Well, it looks like it was Mr. Starbuck who opened that security door. He must have opened it when they went to board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hopes and dreams for his space adventure right then. Detective, I bought the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge one camera. Oh, that footage! Go ahead and ask me anything you'd like about it. Is there any way I could see a little more of the part just after this? You see his pie, I'll be glad to show you. Here we go! Huh? The screen went blank. Yes, apparently the after effects of the explosion damaged the wires. So there's no footage after this point. Ha ha ha! Why didn't you just say so from the beginning? Something definitely seems to be up with you, Detective. You're unusually cooperative. Well, uh, I just figure if we work together, we'll get that much closer to justice, right? But it seems like something's really been bothering you. You don't have some ulterior motive, do you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I could ne I would never do anything like that. It's been a while. But those are definitely psyche locks. Psyche locks. Yeah, let's fucking go. Hmm? Did you just smell psyched? Wait, is it psych lock? Is it psyche lock? I don't fucking know. I'm... I'm confused. Is there something I should be psyched about? No, no. Psych lock. Psyche lock. It's a system of locks on the secrets in a person's heart. Phoenix, why are you even attempting to explain this? You just sound like a lunatic. You can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this Nagatama. You just sound like a lunatic. Presenting evidence can break those locks. And reveal any secrets they're hiding. Mr. Wright, how much did they bilk you out of that piece of bilk you out of for that piece of rock? If you've been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. I'm more than capable of representing myself, thank you very much. It isn't some kind of fraud, it really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. But I guess seeing is believing. Allow me to show you. I can use the Magatama on him, yes. <laughs> Hold on. Ah, uh, okay. Take that! Hmm. 
I think you're hiding something, detective. So why don't you just tell us about it? Hmm, what to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is really in agony. I bet this is the issue he's so torn up over. I really understand what's been bothering you, Detective. I truly do. Something happened that goes against your principles. Isn't that right? Uh, no! I don't know what you're talking about. The life flow of justice. Is that Clavier's, um... Uh... Carpe diem, yes. <laughs> Until the explosions occurred, everything was just fine. Is that a fact? Yep, peaceful as peaceful can be. Everyone whistling a happy tune as they did their job. I never saw a more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. Rocket launch. I don't think the guard detail was as relaxed as you claim as long as this exists. Where are the explosions? What was supposed to happen here was a rocket launch. And yet security was so tight, they even brought in a, spe in a special task force. I'd hardly would describe that as a relaxed guard detail. I didn't... Oh, it says here. Police officers and riot police gave ev evacuation instructions immediately. There was a power outage, and the affected areas remained dark. The security system switched over to emergency power and continued to work. Evacuees moved to the basement shelter. The bombs went off despite tight security. Interesting. <laughs> now hold on just one moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called in on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that that's true. And I say it's very strange that this person would be part of that detail from the outset. A detective who specialized in bomb cases? Take that! Really now. A detective arm specialized in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on, here on hand means that you people knew there, there was a possibility that the bombing would occur. <laughs> you got me, Mr. Wright! Sweet. All right, I concede. You win. It's just, it's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about the about a potential bombing. I just beatboxed. <laughs> but the plan to launch went ahead in spite of went ahead in spite of the tread. Threat! Threat! <laughs> but why? What were they planning to do if someone got hurt or killed? Yeah, I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? How was the warning delivered? By phone, and directly to Director Cosmos. The police department instructed everybody to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to keep quiet about, no wonder you were so upset. Need a beatbox. <laughs> it's not only that. I've been distraught about Prosecutor Blackwell as well. Prosecutor Blackwell? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you have a lot of difficulties. Oh, you dropped by anyways. I just read your, your message to me on, on Twitter that you wouldn't be able to drop by. You're here. <laughs> Okay, yeah. That's not it. It's a question of justice. I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. <laughs> this was you guys the first time we got introduced with the... Um... First time we got introduced to Simon. 
and reason he's still prose prosecuting. Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything you know. Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are rules but things to be broken, right? Well... To tell you the truth, having a prisoner act as a prosecutor is high high highly irregular. Oh my god, no. Yes. Let's battle those microorganisms. Huh, I think we guessed that much. So, why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering about it. So you weren't told why either, huh? No. I guess the order came from pre pretty high up the ladder. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it would had have, have, it would it, it would had to have got. But Prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the Phantom of seven years past continues even still. Seven years past. A Phantom, huh? I'm not one of the friendly variety. One of the friendly variety either, I gather. I keep bringing back seven years. This phantom of seven years past. Any idea who or what he was talking about? Not a clue. But he seems to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. Wait a minute. He thinks they may be connected to this case? Yep, this case has way too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. And in both incidents, a threat was issued by a telephone. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks this incident is the work of the Phantom. Well, that's not the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago. That's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty of murder. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of the law. But you see how this phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell's conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why he'd think that. This incident in the phantom. Not to mention Blackwell's past. It's almost inconceivable that they would come to a, le come to a head here. Um, this might sound crazy, but... Prosecutor Blackwell can't possibly believe Mr. Starbuck is this ph phantom... Is this phantom person, right? I mean, he was acting kind of strange during the last trial and all. The prosecution appears to be ready as well. Silence. Not yet. I'm not quite ready yet. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, I doubt he thinks Mr. Starbuck is his phantom. I want to say Starbucks or Starstruck, like... <laughs> but I do get the feeling that he thinks the defendant has ties to them. Which is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Starbuck. And that's not real justice. I've always trusted in Prosecutor Blackwell's judgment until now. This time, I am just so overwrought about it all. If he's lost his ability to think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false conviction. I've never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. This must be why he's so he's been so cooperative. Don't worry, that's exactly what we defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Prosecutor Blackwell, but I'm going to be rooting for your team this time. But don't tell him that. You have to promise me you won't. Detective Fulbright. I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to reform Prosecutor Blackwell and make him a valued member of society again. 
So I can't just sit by and watch him give in to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. You are the only ones who can stop him in court. You really care and want what's best for Prosecutor Blackwell, don't you, Detective? Leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict either. I was hoping you would say that. I am really grateful to the two of you. To show my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the Space Center entrance a little while ago. Really? Then let's go find her, Miss Wright. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. I'm going to work extra hard to find that perfect piece of evidence for you. In justice we, tr we trust on three. One, two, three. In justice we trust. Okay. Later. Here he goes. Wait. Are we supposed to say in justice we trust back there too? Let's go see what that witness now. Alright. The space center entrance it is. And the witness must be around here somewhere. Hello, hello. Uh-oh. Don't tell me the witness is a robot. Hello! Come over here! Hello, hello. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you... I, 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 I am Clonko. Shall I guide you? g g guide you. I don't know why, but this robot is kind of freaking me out. Hey, you're not supposed to be wandering around. Again? Hmm. I fight it with you, hunk of junk. Ah. I'm outside. Am I wandering? When did that happen? Okay, welcome back. Hunk of junk, you don't know how close you came. If you didn't snap out of it, I was going to put you on the curb of curb on trash day. Nothing works better than a 42.5 degree karate chop. That's pretty specific. Excuse me, but are you the one who witnessed the murder? Oh, I'm Phoenix Wright, the lead attorney for this case. How do you do? Hmm. Big shot lawyers, huh? I'm Aura Blackwell. You what? <laughs> I'm a researcher developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. Black Quill? Could she be? And this good for nothing robot is named Hunka Junk. My name isn't Hunka Junk, my name is Clonko. That's mean Miss Aura. Quit complaining. Your model number is Panko too. Ah, uh, but Miss Aura, everyone calls me Clanko. Quit your squawking already. No, what are you doing? No, don't. There. I bet you won't be talking back now. Ah, uh, I will obey completely. Yikes, I better watch what wires I cross with this one. Last name is Blackwell. Do you have a relative in the legal profession? You are correct. Simon Blackwell, who used to be a prosecutor, is... Shut up. Only speak when I order you to speak. Uh, Simon is my little brother. You know him? Yes. We met him in court a few times. Right, Athena? What a dull creature. Has her switch been turned off? Athena being shy. Is this new? Oh yeah, I heard he was prosecuting again. Despite being a prisoner. Why doesn't he just stick to solving disputes among inmates in prison, right? <laughs> hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? Ah, Miss Aura, that hurts. I'm asking you a question. Why don't you answer me, useless hunk of junk? But Miss Aura, you told me to only speak when you order me to speak. I told you to never talk back to me. You're worth more scrap. 
Combat abuse. Hawk attacks. Blackwell family life must sure be interesting. Well, do you have any other questions? Wait, of course you do. You're a lawyer. It's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get this over with. At least we can see the family resemblance. So, you're the person who witnessed the incident. That's right. I was on the fourth floor of, on the, of the main building, in the robotics lab. The explosion disabled the elevators. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the, de like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why couldn't they have used the ladders in, in the other rooms? It must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best to just humor her here. And as I passed by the third floor, boarding lounge one window on my way down, I saw the crime as it happened. And that's about it. So you saw the crime as it happened, and that's about it. I see. Wait, what? You saw it being committed? This is no time to just nod and repeat. So you saw into the third floor lounge. The very scene of the crime. That's right. There's a small window on the right-hand side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. The room was pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a lighter in their left hand. And a knife in their right. It must have been the culprit. Did you see who that person was? Of course not. The power was out on that floor then. And there was only that tiny window. I see. But you did witness the moment of the murder. Yes, I saw the figure with the lighter raise their knife and... It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you, it was pitch black in there. Although, I did notice that the lighter the person had in their left hand had a pretty ornament on it. How can you see that but not see anything else? It looked like a planet. It was blue, like a little Earth emblem. They had good taste in knickknacks anyway. An Earth emblem on the lighter. I better remember that. Thank you for your statement. We'll definitely prove Mr. Starbucks' innocence with it. <laughs> yeah, right. I won't hold my breath. Pardon me? Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry. I just detest lawyers. That's all. What don't you like about lawyers? It's just an instinctive dislike. But don't feel bad. I hate prosecutors even more. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. Why do you hate lawyers so much? I don't think for my past. The whole legal system is meaningless if in the first place. I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie. They're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect expect such imperfect creatures to uphold the reasonable system of law. I like robots much better. Even sad sacks like this one. Hey you! Look alive there! Hmm. Yes. Yes. Here I go! I am the ultimate robot. Oh my god. Alright, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little too carried away. What was I doing? Yep, I like robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. Unlike humans with their pretty emo petty emotions and constant worries. How can you say such things? Feeling emotions, worrying about the things we care about. That's what makes us human! Well, the girl finally talks. And she starts with a speech. That's what makes us human. You mean getting angry and sh snorting like that? Rational thought. That's what separates humans from animals. Unfortunately, your reasoning capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monkey. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. It, it must be nice to have such a simple mind. Can I punch her, boss? Get a hold of yourself, Athena. Ah, oh, humans certainly are absurd. I, s I said you were clever, didn't I? Poor thing. Tell me, with people like you in charge, 
How can I possibly trust the legal system, hmm? So she distrusts not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system. What in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? Even if somebody important to me was killed, I would never wish to see their killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. You can't be serious! Hmm? And that thing you're wearing around your neck. Oh! This! Around Athena's neck. Does she mean widget? Oh, I get it. Well, well, her royal highness has returned at last to her castle. Royal what? Is she talking about Athena? By the way, I heard the rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness in court tomorrow, right? Director Cosmos. Yes, that's right. You poor things, you had better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. What? He might seem like a bigwig, but the center has all kinds of problems. He has a lot of skeletons in his closet. But it's your problem. So why should I care? What? That's it? No friendly tips? No good luck, guys? Just splendid. I'll leave you to your woes. Come on, hunk of junk. It's sad to me that she doesn't believe in our legal system anymore. She must have had a very bad experience to make her feel that way. Are you alright, Athena? You seem very down. I just can't believe she said all those things! Wow, she's really upset. Has she been trying not to let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all that surprising. You hear about fabricated evidence and false, false indictments on the news all the time. You mean that whole dark age of the law nonsense? I'm so sick of hearing about that. Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Yeah. You're right, boss. I agree. Maybe it's time we went back to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea. We should tell him about the bullet and Miss Blackpill's statement. Alright then. Next stop, the detention center. <laughs> nope. are here. It must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. A researcher saw the moment of the murder through the lounge window during her escape. Really? So they're going to let me go? Unfortunately, it was dark and she couldn't identify the person. Aww. I should have known. My stars never aligned just right, too. We got a lead, too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter with an earth emblem on it. A lighter with an earth emblem. Oh! D did you remember something? Yep, I sure did. Just a little bit, though. Anything at all will, anything at all will be a help, so please tell us what you remembered. I thought I was unconscious the whole time. But now I remember I woke up for a few brief moments. That's huge! Do you remember seeing anything? A lighter. I saw the flame of a lighter floating in the darkness. Good, good. What else did you see? What was nearby? It was definitely the boarding lounge, so it must have been after Clay carried me there. In the light from the flame, I saw a dark shadow flickering. Dark shadow? It must have been... The third party we've been looking for. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You've been more help than you know. We can prove there was this third person at the scene. And that they're the real killer. And you'll be cleared of all suspicion. The key will be whether or not we can identify this third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on now, and that's big plus. That's a big plus. That's a big plus. I should probably tidy the, the evidence up a bit before someone mistakes me for a hoarder. 
Now that we have a glimmer of hope, I'm suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat ourselves to a big celebration in advance? There's someone who's highly empathetic. You can be surprisingly unsympathetic. Oh my god, I just... I just realized the papa hat is in the back. So you found your strategy for tomorrow's trial, huh? Good for you, daddy. Well, it's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it'll give us a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. Now let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My vote is for Eldun's noodles. Oh, Apollo! Do you ever just wear your best friend's jacket when he pass? When he pass? When he passes away? We get it, you're emo. <laughs> what are you doing here? I didn't think the clinic was ready to release you yet. My wounds are fine. And I'm done lying around. Apollo! You're supposed to be in bed! Leave the case to us. We'll take it from here. Seriously, the use of burgers in the anime. I fucking cracked up. Because there is this, like, filler episode that is, like, only in the anime. Where, uh, the noodle burgers. <laughs> no, it was burger noodles. Where, um,. Pearl got this, like, giant shell from Maya, who got it from Mia. And so she asks Phoenix to, like, take her and find a new one when it breaks. And so they go to, like, this ocean side, and they're, like, looking and looking and looking. And then, in the end, uh, Maya shows up. Out of nowhere, after they've prayed to Jesus Christ for help. <laughs> and while Pearl is still looking for those shells. Yeah. Uh, Maya takes Phoenix to this noodle stand. And the shells are fucking noodle balls. Jesus knows the way to burger noodles. And then they like talk about what happened in the past and stuff. And... <laughs> It's so funny because they literally call them burger noodles and I'm just there fucking cracking up. Like, it's just, it's so cursed. It's awful. Ah, okay. Anyways. Thanks. But that's not an option. Not for me. Apollo. You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo. And I don't want you overdoing it. Fine, I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. An IV isn't the cure-all, ma mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how the case is going. Have you guys made any progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. We think they must be the real killer. A suspicious figure, huh? Right. I thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. I fully intend to see Clay's murderer apprehended. Absolutely nothing will get in the way of that. Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? That's right. Best friend since junior high. Sounds like me and Junie. So, what was Clay like? Well, he was full of compassion and energy. And he had a really loud voice. 
The two of you did voice training together. Now, I bet you'd break a few windows. <laughs> you know, I bet you're right. It seems like only yesterday. He was a guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. He was going to be an astronaut, and me, a lawyer. We'd talk well into the night, and even then, we never grew tired of it. Apollo, how about that jacket? Oh, it's Clay's. I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hat Project. He was finally able to get one of his own once he was selected for the Hat 2 mission. He... He always looked so proud wearing it. Just when his dreams was finally... His dream was finally coming true. I... I still can't believe it. Damn it! It's not fair! Apollo, I hope you don't try to carry the burden all alone. I guess we're both un we were both unlucky. My own debut was a disaster. I guess you're right on some level. A trial a year and a half ago wasn't exactly the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me, but Clay refused to let me quit. You're fine, he said. Don't give up. He was right during his screening exams, too. I couldn't have become a full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his is why I'm still standing here today. You're fine, huh? Yeah, I also read screaming exams. You're fine, and I'm fine, were like your catchphrases, weren't they? <laughs> Something like that. Sure brings back memories. When we were in junior high, Clem's mom passed away in an accident. But he wouldn't show his sadness to anyone. One night, I found him crying all alone in the school courtyard. <laughs> Mom! Mom! Get away, Apollo! Don't come over here! <laughs> Clay, listen to me. I don't have a mother either. Huh? Tie me! I always think... Everybody else has a mom. Why am I the only one? But, you know, when I start to feel that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I holler, I'm fine! And then, you know what? I start to feel like maybe I really will be fine. Apollo Justice is fine! Okay, Clay, now it's your turn. Um, okay. Clay turn is... is fine! Here you go! Now we're both fine! <laughs> We're fine! <laughs> We're fine! Oh god. What are you laughing about? See? We're fine! You laughed first! I'm fine! You're fine! We're both fine! That's so cute. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Thanks, Apollo. When you say it out loud, it really starts to feel real. And as long as you don't give up, you can keep on fighting. That's what we believed. As long as you don't give up. Wasn't there somebody else who said something similar? If I give in to my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. I called Mr. Starbuck his mentor and looked up to him. I wonder if I can be a good role model for my staff, like Mr. Starbuck. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. What? Wait, what do you mean by a leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch his killer, myself. That's our goal, too! I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. The truth, huh? 
That's a noble cause. What if the truth you seek and the truth I seek turn out to be different? I, I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? I'm going to catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life in my own way. Take good care of Mr. Starbuck for me. Now I must be going. Goodbye. Goodbye? Did he just say goodbye? I sensed a lot of seething anger and hatred coming from him. And also, suspicion. Ugh, he's not walking out on us like this. I'm going to go talk some sense into him. Hold on, Athena. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth we arrive at would be the same. I think the quicker we solve this case, the better it will be for Apollo. Yeah, you're right, boss. Alright, that's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? If you were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine. Everything is fine. I just hope things really do turn out fine tomorrow. Okay. Oi, I think that that brings me like halfway through this episode, so that means I am going to end it here for today. Let me just double check. Yep. Indeedy. Mm. Yeah. So <laughs> Burning Dog? Am I missing something? Probably. I probably am trying all day too. Emotional. <laughs> the flashback, though. But like I said, we finally get some um, Apollo backstory because we didn't we didn't get it in the previous game. Oh, that one. Yeah, but that's just the Ace Attorney games in general. get more we, we barely got anything like all we know is that his mother was la mirror or um the last side grammarie but <laughs> but yeah but they they really went like we didn't give him a, a backstory the first time around so let's give him five <laughs> Uh, something like that. It's a meme. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. I'm gonna finish this tomorrow and take Monday off. And then maybe be back on Tuesday, I guess. I thought everyone did. <laughs> Hmm. 
only have like five chapters left of like the entire game and then there is a DLC with the redacted it's backdoor story the same as trauma uh it, it, it can be I guess let me see how long are the these ones oh that one's not very long but I'm not gonna do that now this one is though Right? Yeah, it's kind of long. I mean, I love the redacted. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, the redacted. Turn about redacted. <laughs> oh god. It's gonna be great, truly. I am really curious though why like the 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 the, the. It should, right? Turn about redacted. <laughs> and the entire thing is just like filled with innuendos. But like no one even bats an eye about it. <laughs> what was I talking about? I was I, I was talking about something and then I got off track. Um Incidents. Huh. Mm. Anyways. Ah, okay. I see, I see, I see. Oh god, that would drive me insane. I would be like, what incident? What are you talking about? Isn't that like the entire like ending of ending last? No, it's that um, what's it called? Damn it, the one where Kay loses her memories. Then we have to like piece everything together because we're like, what the fuck just happened? Why the fuck did you lose your memories? So it's kind of like that, I guess. Oh, we're just talking about like a hypothetical thing, like that incident. We love dad jokes. <laughs> huh. But yeah. A short stream today. Probably even shorter tomorrow. But that's okay. And then a longer one 
whatever the next one is and then who the fuck knows how long I'm gonna spend on the redacted <laughs> Oh my god, turn about redacted should like be a, a case where literally when you start the episode it just says redacted. It doesn't say turn about or anything. It literally just say, says redacted. And then like the further you get into the case, the more words are added to the title. <laughs> but it's something fucking stupid. Words or letters. Either works. <laughs> huh, but yeah, I hope to see you guys again tomorrow when I will finish up this case. Turn about to the cosmic something cosmos. <laughs> Turn about cheese sandwich. <laughs> well, you know. Um. The cosmic turnabout, that's it. <laughs> I see, I see. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Well, thank you so much for, for coming again. I really appreciate it. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> makes me so happy well yeah I am gonna do god knows <laughs> what right now maybe do some more laundry because I still have some more laundry to do so yeah maybe also finally listen to the new album I bought <laughs> a while back I never got around to listening to that. <laughs> Speaking of, hold on, let me just go get it real quick. This is a whole album. <laughs> Oops, that one's upside down. Whatever. And there are many songs, though, like some are from older singles or whatever, but that's not really that big of a deal. I think, um, Managed to count up to like 17 new songs, I think. Because I'm doing there, some of these have like duplicates as well. Because there are like various versions of the same album. Don't know why they do it like that. But apparently they do and it works because fuck, I buy all three versions all the time. Actually, yes, me too. I love it so much. <laughs> but like... Um... So yeah. But it doesn't end here, because literally immediately after they released this even no actually they hadn't even released it they already announced a new single and like their singles isn't just like a few songs no it's like at least six songs and they also have like three versions hold on let me get like the the, la the latest single <laughs> Oh, 
No, that's the one that didn't come with the, like, a jacket. This is a single. They spoil us with music. We get a new single. Two to three times a year. Which I still find to be insane. It's like, hello, do they like not do anything but produce music? <laughs> and actually for the album, there are four versions technically, but I haven't gotten the last one yet because I had to get it directly from the re website. Beats me. I don't know what the fuck they do, but I know some of them act a lot too. <laughs> I don't know how they have the time, honestly. They do have spare time. Yeah, they do. Every now and then. But it's, it's, it's just so funny when you like think of like Western artists and how they like drop a new album like every few years and like a, a new single has like one, two, like three, maybe four songs if you're like lucky. And that also drops like every now and then, like random intervals. <laughs> Not here. A new album every year. Every single year. New single. Two to three uh, times a year. Don't bring up their music videos. <laughs> it's an embarrassment. Yeah. <laughs> I would recommend getting into Johnny Screws in general, but like, they release stuff like all the time. There is always something that's being released. <laughs> and to keep on top of it all, it's, it's awful. Also certain things like don't ship outside of Japan or you like need like certain like things to be able to purchase and it's just like it drives me insane so i had to like buy like one um the final version of the album i had to buy buy it from like the original site first of all and i also had to buy it through proxy <laughs> which is fun but also expensive mm. Yeah, I, I hope you all had a great time. <laughs> and uh, to see you again tomorrow. And with that, I'm gonna go. Bye bye. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs>